book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Read. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. Read. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. You see when he says, when he says he spake a parable unto them because Christ spoke in parables, man. Give me that in John 16, 25. John 16 verse 25. He spake unto them in parables. Okay, come on. The book of John chapter 16 verse 25. Go ahead. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. In what? In Proverbs. So parables are Proverbs. You understand? Illustrated say, illustrated stories, allegories, dark sayings, parables. Come on. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. He says the time will come when I'm no longer going to speak unto you in Proverbs or parables. Right? But I will show you plainly of the Father. He says, but I'm going to show you plainly of the Father. When the Lord is going to teach us again, he'll teach us plainly. You understand? The things that we don't understand, he will give us clarity in that day. Okay? Go back to Luke 18, verse 1 again. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 1. Read. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. Come on. That men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. Ought always to pray. So prayer is basically asking. When you pray, you're asking the Lord for something. You understand? Read. And not to faint. And not to what? And not to faint. And not to faint. So meaning what? Give me that in First, first Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5 is 17. First Thessalonians chapter 5 is 17. This is what it means when it says men ought always to pray and not faint. Read that. First, yes, sir. Come on. First book of Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Read. Pray without ceasing. He says what? Pray without ceasing. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Pray without ceasing. Pray without stopping. You understand? Every chance you get, you better praise the Lord. Ask for vengeance. Ask the Lord to give you deliverance from the captivity that we're in. Go back to Luke 18. Read verse 2 now. The book of Luke chapter 18 verse 2. Read. Saying. There was in a city a judge mm -hmm. which feared not God. Go ahead. Neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city. There was a widow in that city. So verse 2 again. The book of Luke chapter 18 verse 2. Read. Saying, there was in a city a judge. There was in a city a judge. Go ahead. Which feared not God. Mm -hmm. Neither regarded men. That's the most high God of heaven and earth. Come on. And there was a widow in that city. The same city. Go ahead. That he came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. What did the widow say? Avenge me of mine adversary. He says, avenge me of my adversaries. This is the widow now. Give me Baruch 4 verse 12. Baruch in the Apocrypha. Chapter 4 verse 12. So the widow said, avenge me of my adversaries. Okay, because as, guess what? We have adversaries, man. We have enemies on this earth. We need to understand that. Read it. The book of Baruch. Chapter 4, verse 12. Come on. Let no man rejoice over me, mm. a widow, and forsaken of many. You see that? He says, let no man rejoice over me, a what? A widow. A what? A widow. A widow. Come on. And forsaken of many. And forsaken of many. Read. Who, for the sins of my children, mm -hmm. I am left desolate. You see that? He says, as a widow, I'm left desolate. Come on. Because they departed from the law of God. Because they departed from the laws of God. Jump up to verse 4, read 4 and 5 together. Who departed from the laws of God? The widow, who is now desolate and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Read what you got. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 4. Read. O Israel, mm. happy are we, for things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. This is what you need to understand. The most High God, he loved us so much that the things that are pleasing unto him, Guess what? They are made known unto us. Only us. Not all nations on earth. So the nations don't know how to please the Lord. Because the things that are pleasing unto him was not made known unto them. It was only made known to us. You understand? Read. Be of good cheer, mm -hmm. my people. My people, that's Israel. Come on. The memorial of Israel. The memorial of Israel. Read. Ye were sold to the nation. We were sold to the nation. Not for your destruction. Not the Lord. The Lord did not allow the nations to sell us and destroy us and chain us and change our names and everything. You understand? Because he wanted to destroy us. Go ahead. But because he moved God to wrath. Because we moved the most God of heaven and earth to wrath. 
Read. Ye were delivered unto the enemies. We were delivered unto the hands of our enemies. That's where we are right now. Because we moved the Lord to anger. Jump down to verse 12. Read that again. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 12. Read. Let no man rejoice over me. Come on. A widow and forsaken of many. Read. Who for the sins of my children. Who for the what? Who for the sins of my children. For the sins of my children. Come on. I am left desolate. I am left desolate. Read. Because they departed from the law of God. Because we departed from the laws of God. Come on. Next verse. Read. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments. Read. Nor trod in the path of discipline mm. in his righteousness. You see that? We forgot and we left the discipline of the Most High God of heaven and earth. And because of that, the Lord allowed our enemies to sell us into captivity. You understand? On slave ships. That's what we read about in Deuteronomy 28 verse 32. Read that, read that for me. Deuteronomy 28 verse 32. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 32. Come on. Thy sons and thy daughters. Thy sons and your daughters. Shall be given unto another people. Will be given unto another people as slaves. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them. For, for them all the day long. Come on. And there shall, shall be no might in thine hand. There shall be no might in thine hand. Brothers, have we been transitioned? Because what I'm seeing here, it doesn't look that way. Is it good online? Okay, come on. Verse 41. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 41. Because it says, Our sons and our daughters shall be given unto another people. Read. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. Come on. But thou shalt not enjoy them. We're not going to enjoy our sons and our daughters to see them grow up. Why? Come on. For they shall go into captivity. Because they're going to go into slavery. They will go into slavery. That's what the Lord is saying there with Moses, through Moses. Go back to Luke 18. Luke 18 verse 3. Luke 18 verse 3. Watch this. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 3. Read. There was a widow in that city. Mm. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. Come on. And he would not for a while. Read. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow traveleth because me. Because this widow does what now? Because this widow traveleth because me. Because this widow traveleth me. Through what? Through prayer. So we see, we need to travel the Lord with prayers, man. Don't sit there and say, the Lord knows my heart. Like they say in the Christian church. Whatever it is that is bothering you according to the scriptures, pray to the Lord. We are in captivity. Pray to the most high God of heaven and earth about that. Read. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, mm -hmm. she worry me. She worry me. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, because this widow traveleth me. We need, the Lord says we must travel him. Give me the book of Isaiah 62. Verse 6. Isaiah 62, verse 6. We're coming back here. Because this widow traveleth me. Okay. Isaiah 62, verse 6. The read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 6. Actually, read verse 1. Watch this. Yes, sir. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 1. Read. For Zion's sake. For Zion's sake. The subject matter is Zion. The 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. Will I not hold my peace? The Lord, he says what? I will not what now? Will I not hold my peace? Will I not hold my peace? Come on. And for Jerusalem's sake, mm -hmm. will I not rest? Watch this. Until I will not rest. I will not rest. Read. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as the brightness. Until the righteousness therefore go forth as brightness. As brightness. Meaning the righteousness is the laws of God. When the laws of God are taught in the, among, among the 12 tribes of Israel, wherever they are scattered, they must receive the word of God. The laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Read. And the salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth. You see that the salvation of Israel must be as a lamb that burneth. Because why? The Israel will be taught the law. Give me that in Proverbs 6.23. Proverbs 6.23. It says, Until the righteousness therefore go forth as brightness, as this, and the salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth. What is this lamb that burneth? He talk about the laws of God. Israel keeping God's commandments in the lands of our captivities. Read it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. Come on. For the commandment is a lamb. You see that the commandment is a lamb? Come on. And the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. Read. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You see that? 
as the righteousness therefore go forth as brightness. You understand? What is that talking about? The laws of God. And what? And salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. The laws of God will be taught to Israel. Jump down to verse 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 6. Read. Go. Believe you, sir. The Isaiah 62, verse 6. Come on, man. Oh, yes, sir. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse, verse 6. Read. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. O Jerusalem. Who's the watchman? We the watchmen. Come on. We shall never hold their peace. You see that? We shall never hold their peace. We must never stop teaching this Bible. That's what he's saying. Read. Day nor night, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. He says, keep not, keep not silence. Read. And give him no rest till he establish. He says, we must not give the Lord rest. He says, because this widow traveleth me. You understand? Read. Until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Are we a praise in the earth right now? No. We're not a praise in the earth right now. You know how we're going to become a praise in the earth? Read verse 6 again. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 6. Read. I have set up watchmen upon thy wall. I've set up, I've set watchmen upon thy wall. These watchmen, is they, they are going to be responsible to make sure that the most High God established Jerusalem as a praise in the earth because of the watchmen. The watchmen teach the word. The people come in and we grow. We keep God's commandments and we wait for our, our Lord and Savior to return. Okay, come on. I have set watchmen upon thy walls. Read. O Jerusalem. Come on. Which shall never hold their peace mm. day nor night. Come on. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Keep not silence. Come on. And give him no rest till he establish. Mm -hmm. And till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So go back. Luke 18. Luke 18 verse 5. One more again. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 5. Come on. Yet, because this widow traveleth this me. This is the 12 tribes of Israel. The Lord says we must travel him. Come on. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Watch this. Come on. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. This is the Lord speaking. Listen what he says. Come on. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Shall not God avenge his own elect? Because we are God's elect. Isaiah 45, verse 4. Shall not God avenge his own elect? Because the most high God will truly avenge his own elect. You understand? We're saving a just God. All the evil that these nations have done to us, apartheid, colonization, you understand? Slavery, colonization, and taking of our minerals, pushing us in the ghettos, giving us poor education, they're poisoning us with the food and whatnot. You think they're not going to receive judgment from the most high God? They will receive judgment from the Most High God of heaven and earth. And we will rejoice when we see our enemies fall. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 4. Read. For Jacob, my servant's sake. Jacob, my servant's sake. Come on. And Israel, mine elect. And Israel, my what? Mine elect. And Israel, mine elect. Go back. Luke 18. Read verse 6 again. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 6. Read. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Mm. And shall not God avenge his own elect? When he says the unjust judge, because we think the Lord is unjust. Why? Because the Lord has not returned yet. And we're catching hell out yet. The only way we're not gonna think that the Lord is, is, is we're not gonna think that the Lord is unjust is when we come into the sanctuaries that the Lord is gonna set up for Israel to come and learn. When Israel learn the scriptures, they're not gonna think that the Lord is unjust because they are understanding what the Bible is saying. You understand that, right? Give me that in uh, Romans 15 verse 4. When they, the, people, the people come into this truth, they are not going to think that the Lord is unjust because the Lord is not unjust. You understand? Now read that. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Listen good. For whatsoever things were written for time, uh -huh. were written for our learning, read. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures, patience and what? And comfort of the scriptures. And comfort of the scriptures. You see, because the people in the world right now, they think the most high God of heaven and earth is unjust. Even those, they, especially those that go to church, they think the Lord is unjust because they are not being taught the true gospel of the most high God of heaven and earth. They are being taught Christianity. They are not taught the laws of God. That's why they think God is unjust because when they leave the Christian church, their life is still upside down. 
They're still living in the ghettos. They're still struggling. They're still suffering. They're still, being, they're still being oppressed. You still get paid nothing. You work hard, but you get paid nothing. Why? Because they are not being taught the laws of God so they can understand what's really going on. So the comfort of the scriptures might give them hope. You understand? Read. Read oh, again. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Read. For whatsoever things were written for time. Come on. Were written for our learning. Were written for our learning. For that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Because the scriptures give us hope. The scriptures give us comfort. So you, when, the, when, when you read the scriptures, you understand that we're going to get delivered. Give me Luke 171 real quick. When you understand that we're going to get delivered, the Lord is not unjust. Then when you hear those words... That's when you're gonna, you, will, you will well understand that the most high God of heaven and earth is not unjust. You understand? Read that. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 71. Listen good. That we should be saved from our enemies. We should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate and us. And from the hand of all that hate us. When you hear this, that's when you understand that the Lord is not unjust. Because the Lord is God will truly deliver us from the hands of our enemies because they hate our guts. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of, um, uh, give me Revelation 10. No, actually, I'm going to read that later. Read, read Revelation 21. You understand? Revelation 21 verse 4. Listen good. The book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. Read. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. You see that? Because right now our people are crying, man. They are crying, they are complaining because they, are think, they think what the Lord is unjust. He says, where is God? Because why am I struggling like this? But God is watching, he just sees, he doesn't fix. It's because they don't understand. That's why they think the most high God of heaven and earth is unjust and he's not unjust. The Lord is just and holy in all things. From beginning to end, without end even because he's the ancient of days. The Lord is just. Understand that. Read. And there shall be no more death. You see, this says, the Lord shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Read, and there shall be what? And there shall be no more death. There shall be no more death. Do you understand what that means? You're going to live forever. There shall be no more death. We will live forever. We will rule forever. Because God, guess what? The Lord will give us the gift of eternal life. Read. Neither sorrow. There's not going to be sorrow in the kingdom. How are you going to have sorrow in the kingdom, man? Read. No crying. No crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. You see, because right now our people are in pain. You understand? They, are, they go to church. They go to Sangomas. They go to all these people that be lying to them. They, they pay big money and nothing is changing. You know why? Because they don't understand this book. They don't see themselves in the Bible. They don't understand that this, what we're going through is the punishment of the Most High God. And this punishment is coming to an end because why? We are waking up now to who we are. Now the Lord has given us the Bible to know what we must do to fix this. You understand? So that's mercy right there. Read. For the former things are passed away. For the former things are passed away. Those former things is what? It's captivity, slavery, colonization, apartheid, forced migration. All of that. Guess what? That's the former things. They're all going to be done away with. And guess what? We're going to get our new bodies, our new spirits, and our new minds. And guess what? We will rule the earth. Understand that. So go back. Luke 18. Sir. Luke 18. Read that. The book of Luke chapter 18 verse 6. Read. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. You see, the Lord is not unjust, man. The Lord is just. It's as we think that the Lord is unjust because why? That's why it says what? It says, read, that, uh, read verse 2 again. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 2. Watch this. Saying, there was, a, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. Watch this. And there was a widow in that city. In the same city where the judge was. Come on. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. He says, Avenge me of my adversary. Meaning what? The widow understood that we need vengeance. You understand? We need the Lord to bring forth vengeance on this earth against our enemies. The widow understood that. Back then we understood that and today now we're beginning to understand it. We're coming out of the Christian churches, those witchcraft houses. You understand? Read. And he would not for a while. He would not for a while. And guess what? When he says he would not for a while, 
is the mind of our people thinking the Lord is doesn't see, the Lord is unjust, why God is unfair, why life is like this, why my life is upside down and all of that, is because you are not in this Bible. You understand? If you are not in this Bible, yeah, of course you're going to think like this. You're not in this Bible, you must know your life is a mess. It's that simple. Go ahead. But afterward, he said within himself, Watch this. Though I fear not God, mm. nor regard men. Because he's the God of heaven and earth. Come on. Yet, because this widow troubleth me. Because the widow understands to trouble the Lord. Because the widow understands what's going on. So if we don't understand what's going on, how are you going to trouble the Lord? And what type of prayers are you going to send? You're going to be trying to mingle yourself with your enemies. You're going to be trying to make your enemies to like you. And the Bible says they hate your guts. So I see them in the, in the plantations, in the workplace, where I see our people doing their best to suck up to the white men. Doing their best to suck up to Elam, Ishmael. You understand? And it makes me sick because why? I understand what's going on. So if they knew, they wouldn't be doing that. They will get their respect back. You understand? They will get their respect back. Go ahead. Yet, because this widow troubleth me. Yet, because this widow troubleth me. Come on. I will avenge her. He says what now? I will avenge her. The Lord says, I will avenge her because she troubleth me. Read. Lest by her continual coming. You see, but we must continuously come before the Lord and pray for vengeance. This, pr this prayer right here, the Lord is teaching us to pray for vengeance. Read. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Mm. Come on. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Because we think the Lord is unjust. Again, read. And shall not God avenge his own elect? The Lord is going to avenge his people. Because why? His people are prisoners of war. That's who his people are right now. Prisoners of war. And the Lord, when he sees us, when he's looking down, he's like, yo, I need to go down there. But the 144,000 is still is to be, is, is currently being sealed. Uh, the, you know, the prophets are bringing more and more spirits up in here. When the last one is sealed, it's time to go home. You understand? Read. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Read. Which cry day and night unto him? You see what we must do? We must pray without ceasing. That's why it says we must cry day and night unto him. You understand? We, that means we must have an excellent prayer life. You wake up in the morning, you send up the prayers, you ask for vengeance. You understand? Every chance you get, pray to the Lord that make the time short. Make the time short in slavery, man. It was in the prayer that was being read, right? Yes, make man. the time short yes, in Sirach 36. Yes, get man. that real quick. If you was paying attention during the prayer, Sirach 36, it says, make the time short. 36 verse 8. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 8. Start of verse 7. Listen good. Yes, sir. Verse 7. Mm. Raise up indignation. We are praying that the Lord must raise up indignation against our enemies. Indignation is righteous anger. Go ahead. And pour out wrath. And pour out wrath upon these heathens. Read. Take away the adversary. Take away the white man and all the nations that support him. Read. And destroy the enemy. And destroy the enemy because why? The white man is the ringleader of all these nations. They work together collectively to divide us and conquer us and enslave us. You understand? Read. Make the time short. Make the time short. We pray that the Lord make the time short because we are in slavery. Because the white man, that's why he's destroying the earth. He wants, when he goes down, he wants everybody to go down with him. Understand that? If it was up to the white man, He's going to destroy everybody on this earth because he knows his days are numbered on this earth. He knows it. That's why he's doing anything and if that's why he's living this lavish lifestyle because they know their time is up. Read. Make the time short. Make the time short. Remember the covenant. Remember the covenant that he made with our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read. And let them declare thy wonderful works. And let them, these com this, this, the covenant, declare his wonderful works. Because his covenant is his commandments. The covenant of the Lord is the commandments of the Lord. Okay? Now go back, Luke 18, read verse 7 again. The book of Luke chapter 18, verse 7. Read. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Shall not God avenge his own elect? Which cried day and night unto him. Because we must cry day and night unto the Lord for vengeance. Read. 
Though he bear long with them. Though he bear long with us. Because remember, the Lord is long suffering to us what? He's giving us time to get our minds right. Because if the Lord was to return today, we all be dead men. We be dead. So the Lord is giving us time to get it together. That's why it says he's long suffering to us what? Read. I tell you. That he will avenge them speedily. You see, he says, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. The Lord is going, listen, the most High God is waiting to send his son down here to come and wreak havoc on this earth. Christ just wants to come down, but guess what? Only the father knows when that will happen. He doesn't even know either. Read. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. when the son of man cometh. Nevertheless, when the son of man cracked the sky, when he come down with those millions of angels, what's going to happen? Shall he find faith on the earth? Is he going to find faith on the earth? Is he going to find men and women keeping his commandments, who, patiently waiting for his return? That's what he's asking, man. Why? Because he's letting us know the day when he cracked the sky, there will be very little faith on this earth. There will be very little faith on this earth. The people, the people that will be keeping the commandments of the Mosai, those are the ones that are going to be faithful to the Mosai, understanding what this Bible is saying, that the Lord is coming back. Because many of our people, even in the Christian church, they still don't believe that the Lord is going to come back. In the church, they don't believe it. Because why? They are a faithless, gener a faithless and perverse generation. That's what the Lord said. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? You understand? Because why? The faith is small. That's why we pray to the Lord to increase our faith. Okay? Now, that's it on that. Give me the book of Sirach 25 and 7. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. 25 and 7. We must pray for vengeance. Me, I don't feel sorry for my enemies, man. Neither should we. You understand? Because if it's up to us, you know that we will never come out of captivity. Yes, sir. If it's up to us. We're not going to come out because we will be feeling sorry for our enemies that oppress us. We're going to feel sorry for them. Oh no, but they gave me a job. To hell with that. When the Lord brings judgment, they must all drop dead and die. You understand? Yes, because they will never switch places with you. Never. They will switch places with you. No. They will never do that. So guess what? Do not feel sorry for your enemies. We're not going to feel sorry for our enemies, man. It will never, we, it, back in the day, we would, not today. Yes, not on, no, 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 not now, not, not ever. Now that we know this, do not feel sorry for your enemies, man, because they hate your guts. They want to see you gone on this earth. They've been trying, and it's not for the lack of, it's not for the lack of trying. They've been trying, yes, but we are the sons and daughters of God. That's why we're still here after. There's no nation that can survive what we be survived. No nation on this earth can survive all the atrocities that we've been through, that we're still going through. No nation can survive what we survived. No nation. And the heathens, they know it. That's why they are trying to use, they understand, the, 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 the organs of our brothers and sisters because they are sick. So they are trying to use, the, that's why this organ trafficking and whatnot is for that. White people that eat themselves to death and they get a heart, they get they not they need a new heart. Guess what? They're gonna be doing all this trafficking, stealing our children's hearts and putting in theirs, and then he's gonna eat again. Yes, because they got money and they're gonna say, No, I'm gonna do another heart transplant. You see how many of them they've you say I've done, I've done three already. Hmm? Gastric bypass. They've done a gastric bypass to suck the stomach out and all the garbage out and whatnot, and he's gonna eat one more again. They keep doing the same thing over and over. Why? Because they are degenerates. You understand? These nations are degenerates, man. Give me that in Job 30 and 1. I'm going to show you that real quick. Job 30 verse 1. Do not feel sorry for your enemies, man. Yeah. Watch this. Read it. The book of Job chapter 30 verse 1. Come on. But now... They that are younger than I. In spirit. So they that are younger than I, they that are younger than us in spirit is the white man. He is younger than us in spirit. Read. Have me in derision. They have us in derision. That's why now they say the black man and the black woman, we crazy. They Now they are having us in derision. You know how they have us in derision? Sin. You go to the cases every corner. There's a bottle store. You understand? There's abortion stuff and whatnot going on. Why? Because they're having us in derision. They said, come on, let us deal wisely with them. 
You see, the nations sit down, they deal wisely with us. They plan and plot and scheme on how to destroy and keep the 12 tribes of Israel in confusion. So when we come in the spirit of the Lord to teach God's commandments, we are a threat to the system. We are enemies of the state. You need to understand that, man. Read. But now, they that are younger than I, come on, have me in derision, mm -hmm. whose fathers I would have disdained to have sat with the dogs of my flock. He says, I don't even trust them enough to sit to look after my dogs. Sure. You understand? He says, I cannot even trust them enough to look after my flocks. Because they are evil as hell. The Lord says, do not trust these nations, man. Go ahead. Yea, where to might the strength of their hands profit me? Mm -hmm. The strength of their hands will not profit us, brothers and sisters. Read. In whom old age was perished. Watch this. For what? For want and famine. For want and famine. They were solitary. For want and famine, they were solitary. For lack and famine, they were solitary. Why? Because this is during the Dark Ages. You see, during the Dark Ages, the white men, we pushed them to the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, they were eating worms. They were eating roaches. They were eating all manner of garbage when we were ruling Europe, Russia, England, Ireland, and Scotland during those days. But when you watch the TV, you see the Vikings, they show white people. Where were white people during the time of the Vikings? The Dark Ages, they were eating lice out of their own bodies, man. But they're showing white people that they know the white people are, these are Vikings. They are lying to you. Vikings were black people, man. You understand? You watch that series, the Vi Vikings on uh, Netflix and all. Those were our people. Get the, go look up the Vikings, go to Wikipedia. I'm going to show you the picture of the Vikings, man. That the white man was whitewashing. Read that verse again. The book of Job, chapter 30, verse 3. Watch this. For want and famine. For want, for meaning for one, meaning for lack and what? And famine. They were poor. They were impoverished. Read. They were solitary. They were solitary. Where? In the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Read. Fleeing into the wilderness. Fleeing into the wilderness. Come on. In former time. In the dark, during the dark ages. Read. Desolate and waste. Desolate and waste, come on. Who cut up mellows by the bushes. Who cut up mellows by the bushes. Because that's where they were. In the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. When we rule the earth. You understand? During the Dark Ages. The middle, the, that's what they call the Middle Ages. The Antiquity. Early and Late Antiquity. That was us. Read. And what now? Who cut up mellows by their bushes. Mm -hmm. And juniper roots for their meat. And juniper roots for their meat. So this is what they was eating. Juniper roots for their meat. That's why they call them Caucasians. These people are filthy, man. We work with them. They go to the bathroom. They don't wash their hands. They don't flush. What the hell is this? These are the people that are ruling over us, man. Yes. These are the people that are... That's why I see them, man. I'm like, Shopana said, this is what they are ruling. These are the people that are ruling us. Are you crazy? But yes, these are the people. Degenerates are ruling over us, man. Degenerates. I see them at the plantation. I look at them. I'm like, yo, spit. I've been looking at them. I'm like, these are the people that are telling us what where to get off. You understand? Their days are numbered, man. They're going to get the beats. The Lord is returning, man. Read. They were driven forth from among men. They were driven forth from among men. We chase them like a thief. Because they are one. Read. They cried after them as after a thief. Because the white man is the greatest thief on this earth. They steal identities. You understand? Because the white man has no culture. He's a culture vulture. The white man's culture is to steal, rob, murder, and rape, and steal. You understand? That's his culture. And colonize and conquer and tell lies. That's the white man's culture. He has no culture. You ask them, what's your culture? He's not going to tell you. But we know it better than they do. You understand? Now, is the people seeing this online? Yeah, share the shade with the people online. Because for some reason, me, I can't see nothing, man. I don't know what's going on with this. So, all I want you to see, ne, I want you to click on that picture. Actually, you know what? Read that. Read, read the, 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 the snippets there when it says Vikings. Because Vikings were not white people. They were black men and women. You understand? Yes, sir. Read it. 
reading from wikipedia.com uh-huh. vikings vikings were seas were sea yeah, seafaring were seafaring people originally from Skaduve- scandinavia scandinavia present day denmark norway and sweden so during those days the white man was not there okay during the time of the vikings okay come on woo from the late 8th to the late 11th centuries the late what now who from the late eighth to the late eleventh century? Where was the white man during that time? Because the white man was in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia, eating juniper roots, hmm? eating lice, eating roaches. You understand? Where was he at? Rick? Raided, paraded, traded, and settled throughout parts of Europe. Mm. They also voyaged as far as the Mediterranean, North Africa, the Middle East. Greenland and Vinland, present day Newfoundland, Newfoundland in Canada, in Canada, North America. Stop. So the thing I want to show you here is that you see during this time periods, he says the what the the from who, who were what from the late eighth to the eleventh century. Where was the white man during this time? He was in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Man, you understand? Now click on the early medieval history of Scandinavia. It's just click early medieval. It's right there. Yeah. So you can see when it starts. He's going to show you the time period. Read that. Early Middle Ages. The early Middle Ages. Go ahead. Or early medieval period. Okay, come on. The early Middle Ages or early medieval period, right? sometimes con- controversially, controversially referred to as the Dark Age. You see when he says controversially, because they know black people was ruling. Black people was ruling that time, man. Go ahead. Is typically regarded by historians as lasting from the late 5th to the 10th century. From, from the late 5th, which is the 400s, and that's wrong, because the, the Middle Ages, they started in the what? In the second century, which is what 193 AD, to be exact, when Rome fell in 193 AD, that was the beginning of the Dark Ages when black people was ruling. Rome fell at the hands of Septimius Severus, a black man, a gladiator in Rome. That's where the movie Gladiator of Russell Crowe is based on. Russell Crowe is playing the 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 character of our forefather Septimius Severus. You, there's a book called Imperial Rome. Look it up, Imperial Rome. There's a book called Imperial Rome. You'll see the, 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 you know, the, um, the emperors of Rome. Septimius was one of them. Septimius Severus. He was one of them. Okay. Our enemies, they hate our gods. That's what I want you to understand. They change everything about us, man. But I'm going to show you the picture of the Vikings. You give me first Maccabees 348. I'm going to show you what they did. Imperial Rome. Imperial Rome. No, no, no. Just say Imperial Rome by Time Life Book. That's it. There, there. Imperial Rome. No, no. Go up, up. Showing results. No, 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 no. Go back, go back. There, the suggestion. Click the suggestion. No. He says, it just say Imperial Rome by Time Life Books. Yes, that's it right there. That's the one. We click that. Click it, open it up. Yeah, the one that is more visible. The one on the right. Mm. I, no, let's see the one on the far right. 
is a little bit more visible. No, not that one. The one that is, yeah, that one. You see, inside this book, it shows Septimius, man. It shows Septimius, an Israelite who was a gladiator in Rome. They say he's an, he's an African by descent. No, he's an Israelite. You understand? Okay, but that's, you know, that that's the name of the book. We need to buy that book, man. Okay? Okay, now, go back to the, go back. Did we cut? The, the, the stream is cut. Uh, let's restart the stream one more again. We have to get back. The stream is cutting now when we're going over this biscuit.
How does he figure all this? Because Satan is his daddy. He got all this knowledge from there. But no German engineering. He's, listen, t man is sitting literally on Satan's lap. You understand? But that's why he's the wisest of all the white men. The Germans, they are wiser than all the rest of white people. They are the ones that are actually, technologically, they have actually put the white men in the forefront. Whether it's medicine, whether it's engineering, it doesn't matter what it is. They are the ones in the forefront. Because Satan is dealing with them directly. Read. They were children of fools. They are children of fools. Go ahead. Yay. Children of base men. These are children of base men. Read. They were viler than the earth. They are the worst people on this earth. The worst creatures on this earth. The Lord says this is them. Go ahead. And now am I their song? And now we are their song. Yay. I am their byword. Now we are their byword. That's why they call us duckies, scuffers, niggers and spicks and whatnot. Now we are at their byword. They are calling us outside of God's given names. They don't say we are Judah. They say Umsot. They don't say you are Judah. They say Umuperi. They don't say you are, you are Ephraim. They say no, no, no. You are, you are, you are Cuban. You understand? They don't say you are, you are, you are from the tribe of Issachar. They say no. You are a Mexican. You're not going to find none of those names up in here, man. Because they change our names so that they don't have to be reminded of who we are. That's why, because if they were to call us Jews, Judah, they say, hey, those are Judahites over there. Those are Levites over there. It will always be a reminder of who these people are. They say, no, 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 change their names. Call them Kosas. You understand? So they don't remember that they are the Israelites from the tribe of Judah. Because if they called us like that, of course we would remember. You understand that? Mm, understand that. Okay, do we have it? D is the people seeing it online? Yeah, transition it. I want the people to see this. Okay? Now, I want you to open the picture. Do you see it, Solenium? Okay, click that. Open it up. Now, click the picture. That's all I want. That, uh, yeah, zoom it in. The thing I want is that picture. No, no, not that one. The previous one. Yeah, can we zoom that in? Or you can download it, Mizne. Yeah, let's download that, that picture. I want you to see what the white man did. You give me first Maccabees 348. Because these are the Vikings, man. The Vikings were black people. Don't be fooled, brothers and sisters. We just read the history of the Dark Ages right here in the book of Job. That the white man was not there during that time. He was in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. How was he in, the Scandi in Scandinavia during those days? Yes, yeah, zoom in some, zoom in. Yes, 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 yes. Now, do you see these men? Look at these men wearing helmets and they have swords and they have shields. Look at their faces. You see what the white man was doing? The white man was whitewashing their images, man. Look at their faces. Do you see that? He did a terrible job at whitewashing them. Okay, move the cursor so they can see the heads of the people. They, you see the heads of the people? You see what the white man was doing? He was changing the faces of our forefathers, man, the Vikings. You see what he's doing? Look at the faces, man. He was basically using a, a whitewashing tool to what to remove color from these pictures look at their faces man look at them you see that look at them these are black men going to war and they are on a ship zoom out so they can see the ship the viking ship there these are the vikings this is the 1100s where was the white man during the 1100s you understand? So the Vikings were black people. Now, go to the next picture. I'm going to show you what he did there. They did not even hide this. Go to the next picture on that website. I want the people to see it. Yeah, look at that. Do you see this? That's some serious whitewashing, man. Who looks like that? Which people on this earth, they look like that? Nobody looks like that, man. 
What was these people wearing? Because an artist had to sit down to draw the dress code of the people and the color of the people wearing the dress code. But look at what those people, what are they, what are they wearing? The white man was changing the images, man. Give me first Maccabees 3 verse 48. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Come on. And they laid open the book of the law. Read. Wherein the heathen... The white men, the Greeks, come on. ...had sought to paint the likeness of their image. You see that they sought to paint the likeness of their image. It's called iconoclasm. We've got two series, two-part series on online where we go deep into details about iconoclasm. You can watch that class on your... Those classes on your own. But we go deep into that. Now, um... Give me now. Give me Sarah 25 verse 7. I just wanted to show you that, man. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25 verse 7. Watch this. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. Go ahead. He and says, these things I have judged in my heart to be happy. They make me happy. Watch this. Go ahead. And the tenth. I will utter with my tongue. He says, but the tenth, I'm going to utter them with my tongue. Watch this. Come on. A man that has joy of his children. A man that has joy of his children. He says, he says I'm going to utter that one with my tongue. I'm going to say it out loud. Read. And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemies. You see that thing right there? And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemies. We want to live to see the fall of our enemies. We want to see our enemies fall. And we want them to see us seeing them fall. You understand that? Read. Well is him. That okay, that's it. That's it on that. That's something different now. That's for next week, Lord's will. When we go over the men, the men, we deal with the men, manning up part two. You understand? Read that again, verse seven. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse seven. Go ahead. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. Read. And the tenth I will utter with my tongue. Come on. <clears throat> a, a man... What did you say? A man that has joy of his children. A man that has joy of his children. And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemies. And he that lives to see the fall of his enemies. You understand? And guess what? We are all observing the feast of the Passover. Guess what? We live to see the fall of our enemies during those days. We saw them drown in the Red Sea. You understand? We live to see the fall of our enemies during those days. You think we don't want to live to see the fall of our enemies in these last days? We want to see the same thing happen again. You understand? Now, give me Sarah 39 verse 28. Ecclesiasticus 39 verse 28. Sarah 39 verse 28. Listen of, good. Yes, sir. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 39 verse 28. Read. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. He says there are spirits that are created for vengeance. Read. Which in their fury. In their what? In their fury. In their anger. Great anger. Read. Lay on sore strokes. They lay on sore strokes. Come on. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force. They pour out their force. In the time of what? In the time of destruction. In the time of destruction. The name of the class is called what? Destruction, death, and what? And deliverance. Come on. They pour out their force. They do what? They pour out their force. Read. And appease the wrath of him that made them. And appease the wrath of him that made them. Who's the one that made them? The most High God of heaven and earth. When the, 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 the spirits that are created for vengeance, they bring forth vengeance. They appease the most High. They please the heavenly father of heaven and earth. Read again. Verse 28. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 28. Read. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, mm. which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the, time, in the time of destruction, they pour out their force. They pour out their force. Come on. And appease the wrath of him that made them. And appease the wrath of him that made them. Hey, let's get those images, man, from Time Life books. Come on, Soldier John. I want those books. I want those images. I want us to go into the book now. You understand? I want to go into the plagues because what we read in here when it says spirits, these are going into plagues. These plagues, the plagues in Egypt, they were created for vengeance against the Egyptians that oppressed us. You understand? Give me that in Exodus 11 verse 7.
Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 7. Read. But against any of the children of Israel. Against any of the children of Israel. Shall not a dog move his tongue. Shall not a dog move his tongue. You see, our enemies are dogs to us, the Israelites. Read. Against man or beast, that he may know, that he may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. You see that the Lord put a difference between the Bantus and Hamites. Let's just keep it, let's, keep, let's explain it like that. The Lord put a difference between the Israelites, the Bantus, and the Hamites. You understand? Now, while you're doing that, look up the Tutsis of Rwanda. Tutsis of Rwanda. You understand? You'll see how tall they are. We, we, listen, I'm going to show you the people that enslaved us during the time of Egypt. You understand? Thirteen hundred BC, thirteen hundred BC. That's during that time. Thirteen hundred BC. Of course, they're gonna show us the Rwandan genocide. Because what? They feeling sympathy for the Tutsis? No. The Tutsis were the ones that actually were killing the Hutus. You understand? You know, show Tutsi chairs say Tutsi with Belgium. Tutsis and be the and Belgium, Belgium. No, 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 Tutsi. Yeah, Tutsis. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Tutsis. You can see them properly. No, 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 no. Or just say that, uh, they, you know, tall tootsies. Yeah, just look up that. Tall tootsies. Yes, show the, those ones on the left. Do they show or they are not like us? Yeah, these are Tutsis. These are the people that enslaved us during the time of Egypt, man. These are ancient Egyptians. You understand? Now look up the other ones. Yeah, or just look up Pokagami. Show Paul Kagami, because he's a Tutsi. Read that Exodus 11, verse 7 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 7. You see, this is a Tutsi. He's a Tutsi. That's not a Hutu. That's a Tutsi. Okay? His forefather is the ancient Egyptians, the pharaohs, Amos the first, Ramses the second. You understand? I'm in Hotep, Hatshepsut. That's them. You see him and his, uh, you see the children? Is it them right there? Yeah, that's them, Muslim. The P yeah, that one is fine too. Now, now, show the Kikuyu tribes of Kenya. The Kikuyu tribes.
So is the people seeing this online? Okay, oh please. Yep. You see that? Yes. Yes, that one. That's it right there. These are tutis. You understand? These are Hamites. Let's put it that way. These are Hamites. They're ancient Egyptians. Okay? Yeah, this is them. Show the ones that put their lip on their, or uh, uh, like a plate on their lip. Plate on a lip. Why is it in bold letters? No, don't say Kikuyu type. Just say plate on lip. Yes. You see, this is them. These are Hamites. Yep, this is them, right? This, these are Hamites. Yeah. You see what? You see that? That's them. Yeah, that stop right there. This is them. You understand? That's them. These are Hamites. Now read Exodus 11 verse 7 again. Did we upload the pictures? The now read the Bible. The book of Exodus chapter 11 verse 7. Come on. But against any of the children of Israel read, shall not a dog move his tongue. A dog move his tongue. So the Lord when says shall not a dog move his tongue. He's talking about these Hamites. Go ahead. Against man or beast. Read. That he may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. You see that? We are not the same, man. We are not the same people, man. We are not the same. Understand that? So there's a difference between Bantus and Hamites. We are not the same. Understand that? Okay, now, do we have page? Now go to the book now. You understand? Page 51. Do we have page 51? Okay, where's the laptop? Because I cannot see what I'm reading, Muslim. Yeah, but I want the people to see the title of the book. Where we read him from. Go back to Sarak 39 verse 28. I'm going to be going over the plagues of Egypt so you understand. I, I want you men to read the, the pictures so we can go over them. Yeah, put it here. Let me see. Okay, I've just put it, put it here. Because I want to be able to see what we're reading, man. Okay, now give, or, or give me the book so I can see where we're reading from. Come on, come on. Give me the book. Okay, did you put the book up? Brothers and sisters, this is the book we're reading from. Because I realized that when I was showing the books, you know, I, I made the book, I was showing the people in the audience, not realizing that the camera only saw half of the book. I saw it when I was watching the replay, man. I'm like, yo, this is the book. The book is called The Israelites by Time Life Books. Okay, we're going to go to page 51. Okay, do the people see that? Online? Yeah, read that. Sarak 39, verse 28. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 39, verse 28. Come on. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. You what, that's what we need, to, we need to understand. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Come on. Which in their fury. In their what? In their fury. Right. Lay on sore strokes. Mm -hmm. In the time of destruction. 
They pour out their force. Read. And appease the wrath of him that made them. Come on. Fire and hail. Fire and hail. This is what was happening during the time of Egypt. Fire and hail. Come on. And famine. And what? And famine. Because the Lord sent locusts up there. Remember even during the time of Joseph, there was a famine in Egypt. Who sent the famine? The spirits that were created for vengeance. Read. And death. And what? And death. Because that's what they, that this is these are the things that was happening in Egypt. Fire, hail, famine, death. Go ahead. All these were created for vengeance. All these spirits were created for vengeance. Fire is a spirit, hail is a spirit. You understand? Famine and death, those are spirits that are created for vengeance by the most high God of heaven and earth. Okay, come on. Teeth of wild beasts. Teeth of wild beasts. And scorpions. Mm. Serpents. Red. And the sword. Punishing the wicked to destruction. You see that? Destruction, death, and deliverance. Understand that? Now, let's read the book. We got it now? Okay. Now, show the people online. Read the title of the book. The title of the book. The Israelites. Mm -hmm. By Time Life Books. By Time Life Books. Let's go to page 51. I want you to read the highlighted part in pink. Page 51. Uh-huh. Come on. The turning point in the history of the Israelites was reached not in the promised land, but during the desert journey to Canaan from Egypt. From where? From Egypt. Where we were slaves for 400 years. Come on. Where, according to biblical tradition, they had been enslaved for generations. They had been enslaved for how long? For generations. I'm going to show you how long we were enslaved. Hold this. Give me the book of Genesis real quick. When the Lord was talking to our forefathers, what would happen? Genesis 15, um, read verse 12. When our forefather Abraham, the Lord put him in a trance. Watch this. You understand? He fell in a deep sleep and guess what? The Lord gave him a vision, showed him a vision. Watch this. Not a trance, but a vision. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 12. Come on. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And lo, and a, and a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Read. And he said unto Abraham, mm -hmm. No of a surety. No of a surety for effect. No for effect. Come on. That thy seed. That thy seed. Shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Read. And shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. They shall serve and they be, we will be afflicted 400 what? 400 years. Read. And also that nation mm -hmm. whom they shall serve will I judge. You see that? It says that nation that we're going to serve, the Lord is going to judge them. So we're going to read about the judgment of that nation that enslaved us for 400 years in Egypt. Okay. Now go back to the book. Read that again. The turning point in the history of the Israelites was reached not in the promised land, but during the desert journey to Canaan from Egypt. Go ahead, where we were slaves. Come on. Where, according to biblical tradition, they had been enslaved for generations. 400 years. Go ahead. The Exodus itself, mm. under the inspiration and leadership of Moses, Read. signaled the Israelites' deliverance from oppression by foreign masters. The Egyptians. Come on. A pivotal miracle, miracle wrought. They believed by the God of their father. The most high God of heaven and earth. So now let's get the Exodus timeline. Go to page 10 in the same book. Page 10. Yes. Did the people see it online? Okay, let's transition this thing. Put it up so the people can see it. Do they see it? Okay, now read that, the first highlighted part. What does it say? That part right there on the top is an, an Israelite what? An Israelite chron chronology. An Israelite chronology. Okay, come on, read the highlighted part. See. 1300 BC. That's 1300 BC. 1300 years before Christ. Go ahead. Period of bondage in Egypt. The period of bondage in Egypt. Okay, come on. 1225 BC. 1225 BC. Exodus from Egypt through desert wilderness. You see that? 1225 BC. 
is approximately around that time. 1225 BC, that was the Exodus. You understand? That was the Exodus. Okay. Now let's go back. Go to page 51. Now read the highlighted part in, in, in orange. Read that. And show the picture on the left. Because I don't think... Did you take this picture on the left? Okay. We want the picture on the left. Do we have that picture? Moses and the 12 patriarchs. 12 principal men. Now read that. The highlighted part. Do the people see it online? Okay, let's go. Painted in the 3rd century AD. 3rd mm, century AD, come on. This fresco, more than 4 feet high. Mm, how long? More than 4 feet high. It says this fresco was more than 4 feet high. Read. Dramatizes a traditional view of Moses, of Moses' God-given power. Because Moses had powers. Moses had powers, man. Go ahead. Miraculously creating a well in the desert. Mm. He provides water for 12 tribes men. 12 tribes men. This is the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Who? Exhausted by the flight from by Egypt. By the what? By the flight. You see, when we left Egypt, we ran. When we left Egypt, by the flight. By the flight from Egypt, we were on the run. You understand? Read. Exhausted by the flight from Egypt. Mm. Had lost confidence that he would save them. The work was discovered. The work was what? The work was discovered. It says this work, this picture, this picture, this fresco that is four feet high. It says it was discovered. Wait a minute. Discovered. That means that they did they were destroying our images, our history, man. Yes, sir. You understand? Go ahead. You can put it here. Read. The work was discovered on the wall of a synagogue. Uh, for, from the what? On the wall of a synagogue mm -hmm. in the Jura, in, in, in Dura Europas, in Dura Europas, read an ancient city in the river Euphrates in Syria. You see that Dura Europe, this is in Syria. It says this fresco is four feet high. Yes, you understand? We made sure that our people understood what was going on. Now, what I want you to see is the picture on the left. Do we have it? Show the people the picture on the left. That's the picture, man. You see, now count the 12, the 12 tribesmen. Count them around Moses. How many did you count? It's 51, sir. It's at the bottom. Four. Go ahead. You see, those are the 12 tribesmen. You see around that, all praises to the most high. So that's the picture that is four feet high. You understand? Now that's Moses right there. Now, watch this. Go to page 52 now. No, same page. You're going to read the, the highlighted part at the bottom in pink. You're going to read that. Uh, what do you need? So I want pay. Yeah, that part right there. Now read that. The biblical account. Hold on. The people online see this, right? Oh, please. Come on. The biblical account of this next phase of the Israelite history is told in the book in the books of Exodus, mm -hmm. Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Taking up the tale where Genesis leaves off. Yes, he's taking, taking up the tale where Genesis leaves off. Go ahead. The sons of the... The patriarchs. Now go to the next page. Page 53. Yes. Yeah, that part right there at the corner there. Just zoom in on the left. Yeah, the one on the left. You can just move the cursor so the people can see. Yes. Zoom out a little bit. Yeah, that's it right there. Now read that. Of the 12 of the patriarchs. The sons of the patriarch Jacob. Uh-huh. 
who was renamed Israel. In Genesis the 32nd chapter. Go ahead. Are settled in Egypt. They are settled in Egypt where they had gone to escape a disastrous famine in Canaan. You see that? Read. The Egyptians enslaved their descendants. He said the Egyptians enslaved the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read. Who eventually depart from Egypt mm. and receive the Ten Commandments from Yahweh. That's the Most High God. Come on. As well as in time an elaborate corpus of their laws. By of which other laws. Apologies, sir. An elaborate corpus of other laws by which to live. Uh -huh. They ultimately arrive after a traveled field journey mm. through the desert wilderness. That's the wilderness. Come on. At the threshold of the land of Canaan, mm. at the close of these four books, the 12 tribes stand assembled, assembled on the hills overlooking the Jordan Valley, ready to move in and settle down on the land promised their forefathers. Now watch this. Keep reading. Watch the next part of that. Look, look, look the next paragraph. Listen to what it says. Come on. The human hero. The human hero. In all the stories that fill this sec the, the sequence. The sequence. A field this sequence in Moses is Moses is Moses. Read that thing again. Come yes, on, sir. pay Apologies, attention. Sir. The human hero in all the stories that fill the sequence is Moses, reputedly a great grandson of the patriarch Jacob's son Levi. You see that? So, so now you see when they're saying, um, they says what it says the, to fill it. The sequence is Moses says uh, the human hero. Moses was a superhero. He wasn't a human hero. What the hell is a human hero? He was a superhero. You understand? He was an avenger. Understand that. Go ahead. According to the legend. He's not the legend. According to the Bible. Where would they get this from, man, if they didn't read the Bible? They say according to the legends. Like this is some story that didn't happen. What you talking about according? The white man is the devil, man. He says according to the legend. What legend? According to the Bible. Read. According to the legend surrounding his life, Moses was born in Egypt. Where did they get this? Where did they get this from? Because <laughs> they got it from the Bible. They say according to the legends. Read. Moses was born in Egypt at a time when Pharaoh, alarmed by the rate at which the Israelite population was increasing, mm -hmm. decreed that. Okay, come on, move it a little bit. Decreed that. When every newborn Israelite son be, drown be drowned in the Nile. You see, so Pharaoh commanded that every Israelite child must be drowned in the Nile that is born. If it's a boy, kill them. You understand? If it's a girl, leave them alive. Because Pharaoh was already pushing feminism during this time. He was already pushing feminism men in the, among the 12 tribes of Israel when we were slaves in Egypt. He was already deprioritizing black men and prioritizing black women like the white man is doing today in spiritual Egypt. Where the black woman is in front of the black man and the black man is holding a baby. While the black woman has her hands in her pocket with a cigarette in her mouth. That's what's going on today, man. I see black men holding women's handbags. I mean, what the hell is this? Sister, you put your handbag, you carry it. Why must I be carrying your handbag? But that's what's going on today. Hmm? Now, watch this. Go to, uh, go to page 55. Page 55. Let's go there. According to legends. Yes, yes, man. Where we at? Page 55. I want to go to page 55. We're going to go to the plagues, but I wanna, I'm want i taking you through the history. You understand? The same history that they say according to legends, but they got it from the Bible. But they say according to legends. And the name of the book is called The Israelites. Where did they get that from? The legends too? Yo. Yeah, zoom in on that so the people may see that thing. This is page 55. The people see it online, right? All places. Now read the title there on the top. Reading from page 55. Uh -huh. A Pharaoh's own monotheism. Monotheism meaning the worship of one God. And where did they learn that from? From us. Yes, when we were in Egypt. Because Egypt had many idols that they were worshipping. Like the Arabs, they had an idol for every day of the year. 
And when they came to cross with, they, they crossed paths with the Israelites, our forefathers, they also started to say, no, we're pushing monotheism, the worship of one God. Then they introduced that black rock called Allah. You know, these nations, man, they have no gods. They have idols which, whom they worship. Now read that. Watch this. Until the what? Until the mid 13th century BC. 13th century BC. Go ahead. When Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. So guess what? They said the Exodus was what? 1225 BC. It says until the what now? Until the mid 13th century. 13th century is 1200 BC. 13th century is 1200 BC. Okay, go ahead. When Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, mm -hmm. no other people of the ancient world had worshipped a single, a well, single, a single all-powerful God. Mm -hmm. In Egypt, as elsewhere, the people venerated many gods. You see that? So now the Egyptians, they started to want, they also want to worship one God. Now I'm going to show you something with that. Go to page, mm. yes, uh, let me see. Go to page 57. Yeah, go to page 57. I'm going to show you something here. Because guess what? They started to introduce the worshipping of one God. But they didn't do that before. You see? They had gods for every day too. Now, is that the one? I mean, there's more pictures in that. Yeah, that's not the one. Where's the rest of the images in this? Okay, so zoom in on that, uh, the one that I highlighted in square. I just put a square around it. You zoom in on that. That's the one we want to see. I want you to read that. So these pictures that you see here. So John, I want you to look. You go back to page 55. Is that the one? Or page 57? Yeah, page 57. There's many images there. I want to show you that. I want those images to be captured. Now read this. This is page 57 from the same book. Okay, come on. Reading from page 57. Mm -hmm. Fantastic gods. You see, fantastic. They say worshipping of a fly is fantastic. Frogs, fantastic. You understand? Now read that. Fantastic gods from Egypt's extensive pantheon. So, so the white man is always glorifying Egypt because why? The white man is, is ruling the empire now. We are in spiritual Egypt under the white man's empire. Understand that. Okay, now read that. During the Israel, Israelites' time of captivity in Egypt, mm -hmm. late in the second millennium BC, Go ahead. they were confronted by an extraordinary array of gods. Yeah, idols. In Egypt, they say extraordinary. Like there's something special about these uh, dumb idols that they worship. There's nothing special about them. Go ahead. Of which the five shown here represent but a few. Mm. The Egyptians had gods to monitor every aspect of life. You see that? Just like the Arabs before they met with us. So the Egyptians, they did the same thing. Before we became a great nation in Egypt, guess what? There were a multitude of many gods, right? Guess what? They started to, when the Moses showed up on the scene, Moses started talking about the most high God of heaven and earth, the God of Israel. That's why it says, which God, Moses? In that movie, yes. the Exodus. Go ahead. In the course of centuries, in the roster of deities continued to grow longer mm. as gods with new functions or physical forms. Okay, come on. The Egyptians had gods to monitor every aspect of life. In the course of centuries, the roster of deities continued to grow longer as gods with new functions or physical forms were added to the pantheon. While none of the old gods was ever discarded. Do you see that? They never let them go. Right? The Egyptians revised the attributes of some. You see, they said they did what now? Revised the attributes of some. Watch this. Or combined animal and human traits to form a new to form new deities to suit the people's changing needs. That's it. Isn't that what's going on now? 
in this white man, the white man's kingdom to suit the people's changing needs because now there's the LGBTQYZ community. You see, they keep adding a new letter to suit the, what, the people's changing needs. So now it's no longer LGBT. There's a Q now in there. There's another letter now that they're going to add and so on and so forth. That's the same thing that was happening in Egypt. So when the LGBT community says we want this, they add a new letter. Isn't that what's happening in Egypt? The same thing that was happening back then is happening today. So where does the white man get all this from? He gets them from ancient Egypt. So the white man studies all the empires that were before and he takes all the garbage he brings it into his kingdom. And that's what's happening right now. Now, did we take pictures of the rest? Yeah, share them on the screen so the people may see this. In the meantime, we can read some of these. Go up. Yes, yeah, that's the one I want. Share it with the people online. I want the people to see this. Start with the first one. Zoom in. I just want the small writing next to it. No, that's not the first one. Yeah, that one, that looked like a snake. Okay, it's a little bit blurry. Okay, the people see it online now. Is it good? Okay, now read that. Still blurry on my side. Is it still blurry on your side? Zoom out a little bit. Maybe it will be better. Brothers and sisters, bear with us. We're trying to get the information to you so you understand. We're having network issues, so bear with us this day. Okay? You, is, the first word is Aton. Yes, sir. Aton, a god of creation. You see that thing that you see on the left? They say that's the god of creation. They say this thing that you, this idol, this dumb idol that you see on the left, that's what created the, the heaven and the earth. That's what they say. You understand? Then the next one. Torret. Yes, sir. Toweret. Toweret. This fat demon. This is a fat thing. You see what it looks like? It's fat. Yes. Zoom out a little bit. In Alam Kava. He's going to tell you what this what is. They say this is an idol of something else. Watch this. <laughs> now read that. What does it say? Toweret. Toweret. A goddess of childbirth and motherhood. You see that? They say this is what's responsible for what? For people, sisters falling pregnant. That's what they say. Toweret. Now keep going. Yeah, this one. Cat woman. Is this not cat woman? Cat woman was this thing. Now go ahead. Bastard. Bastard. Yes, sir. Bastard. A protector goddess of lower Egypt. A protector goddess of lower Egypt. Now go on to the next one. Uh, Horus. Horus, a sky god. You see, that's why the most high god, what did he do? He brought hail on earth. They say, let Horus save you. Horus did not save them. You understand? Next one. Mm. Is that a cat? What is this? You know that cat where he minks? Yeah? Yes, the one that don't have no feathers? Yes, Man, that thing is disgusting. You ever seen that thing? Yes, Yo. Now read that. Anubis, the, last word, sir. the god of mummification. Yes, sir. Anubis, the god of mummification. No, mummification. Anubis, the god of mummification. Mummy, the mummies. You know these tombs that they be putting together. Yes, you sir. see it in the movies. Yes, sir. 
You understand? There's even a movie at Tom Cruise called The Search for a Mummy. Something of that nature. Yep. Okay. That's it on that. Um, now, now, go to Exodus 1 and 1 now. Exodus 1 and 1. You can take those things off the screen now. Exodus chapter 1 verse 1. Listen good. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 1. Read. Now these are the names of the children of Israel mm. which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Come on. Reuben, mm. Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Read. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. Uh -huh. For Joseph was in Egypt already. Because Joseph was sold by his brethren to Ishmael, the damn devil. Ishmael, hey my friend, you see covers for their cell phone, covers, you see them in the, in the, in the malls, ne? They be saying that this is the, the they are the ones that bought Joseph. The Arabs, boom, my so called friend. You understand? Go ahead. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. Read. And the children of Israel were fruitful mm. and increased abundantly. Go ahead. And multiplied and waxed exceeding might. Read. And the land was filled with them. Because guess what? We multiply like we're doing right now under the white man's empire they keep killing us we don't die we multiply we don't die because guess what we poor what is the thing that we do the most we having sex with our wives we popping babies yes of course oh, you understand what i'm saying yes because we're in captivity we stressed out and everything when you come home guess what you want the box yes, to comfort yourself because you are in captivity oh, you understand so guess what? We don't die, we multiply. We keep making more and more babies now. You understand? Now, give me the book of Deuteronomy 26 verse 5. It says, we multiplied, we became, we became exceeding mighty. You understand? Deuteronomy 26, read verse 5. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 5. Come on. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God. Read. A Syrian. Ready to perish was my father. Come on. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation, mm. great, mighty, and popular. So in Egypt, we became great, mighty, and populous. We were popular in Egypt. Yes, sir. We were mighty in Egypt. We were great in Egypt. And they got worried about us. Isn't the same thing that's happening now? Yes, sir. They are worried about That's why they are trying to do population control. They say, no, when you come in, a C-section is by default. Because they know you can only have three babies. And that's it. You understand? They do. And after that, they're going to be tying your wife's tubes. That's what they be doing. Yes, sir. Population control. You understand? Go ahead. And the Egyptians. Even so so we, they, we became a, when did we become a nation? In Egypt. Yes, sir. You understand? Go ahead. And the Egyptians evil entreated us mm. and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. They laid upon us hard bondage. Come on. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, mm. the Lord heard our voice. The Lord did what? The Lord heard our voice. Come on. And looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. Come on. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with, a, with great terribleness mm. and with signs and with wonders go ahead and has brought us and has brought us into this place and has given us this land even a land that floweth with milk and honey which is the glory of all land that's the land of adam and eve that's the garden of eden by the way why do you think people be fighting over they know that's the land that's the garden of the garden of eden is there in the land of jerusalem you understand now watch this give me the book go back to exodus 1 Exodus chapter 1, read verse 8 now. Exodus 1 verse 8. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 8. Is the, did we transition back? Okay, come on. Now, there arose up a new king over Egypt, mm -hmm. which knew not Joseph. Read that again. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 8. Now, there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. There arose up a new king over Egypt with knew not Joseph. This is the new kingdom of Egypt. It's called, guess, this is was under Amos the first. 
This is the Pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. This is the Pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. There arose a new king over Egypt with new not Joseph. This is Amos the first. Amos the first did not give a damn about what, what Joseph did in the past. You understand? He didn't give a damn about that. Because Joseph helped them when they were going, when there was a famine. So he didn't care about what Joseph, our forefather, did. No. He said, listen, these people are multiplying. They're becoming more and mightier than we. We need to deal wisely with them. Now read the Bible again. Read verse 8 and 9 together. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, mm -hmm. which knew not Joseph. Read. Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel, are more and mightier than we. You see that? He says, these people are more and they are mightier than we. Go ahead. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. You see that? Let us deal wisely with them. What did they introduce in our community? Drugs, gangsterism, madaisi. You understand that? Uh, abortion, slaughterhouses and whatnot. There's drugs at every corner. Guess what? There's bottle stores at every corner. But you'll never find a library. Right here in Carfontaine, guess what they're doing? They are building a new recreational facility. There's basketball courts. There's a tennis court. Right across the road, there's a school. There's a primary. It's built got it in cans. You understand? They are using containers to build the school. But on the left, they're building a recreational place. They're using bricks. Yes, sir. You cannot make this up, man. So the school is getting demolished on the left while people are playing basketball on the, on the right. That's what's taking place. You understand? But uh, where's the library? You, you, listen, we don't even know where the library is here in the gas. We can't find it. Yes, but I can tell you how many bottle stores and shabies uh, and shabins are, are here on the road. Many. You see how these nations deal wisely with us? How do how, the black men don't make no guns? Who's introducing guns in the black community? The Ishmaelites, the Arabs. They're the ones that are black, giving black men guns to shoot each other. While they continue to rob us and poison us, they come and they put poison in Mazimbas for the school children when they go to school. Look what happened in Soweto. You understand? But my friend, these are not our friends. These are our enemies, man. And we must not trust our enemies, the Lord says. Give me that in Sarah 12 real quick. We're coming back. You know what? Give me Psalms 83. That's better. The Lord told us that, listen, man, We've got, the white man is at the top of these nations that are planning and plotting evil against us. The white man is the top on the list. You understand? That the most high God of heaven and earth will send his son Christ to come and kill. And we want to live to see that thing. Yes, sir. Give me that in Psalms 83. Read verse 1, man. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Read. Keep, keep not thou silent, O God. We're dealing with what we read in Exodus 1 when it says, let us deal wisely with them. This is how the nation deal wisely with us. They plan and plot and scheme on how to destroy black people. Go ahead. Keep not thou silence, O God. Read. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. Come on. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. You see that? An angry gathering. They come together. The nations, they gather together like an angry mob. That's what the United Nations is all about. The United Nations is an angry mob of, of the heathens Plotting and scheming on how to destroy black people wherever we scattered. Read. And they that hate thee. They, they that what? And they that hate thee mm -hmm. have lifted up the head. The people that hate God have lifted up the head. That they are the Jews. That God is white. That the angels are white. That Christ is white. They have lifted up the head that they are the Jews of this Bible. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. That's why it says, come on, let us deal wisely with them. That's the crafty counsel. The crafty counsel is them dealing wisely with us. And them, because remember, the nations know we are the Jews. But in the media, they still say black people, Africans, black people, Bantus, Kosas, Peris. They're dividing us. They keep pushing that garbage so that why? we remain divided and we remain hating each other while they rob us collectively. Read. And consulted against the, the hidden ones. Because we are the hidden ones. Nobody knows that we are Jews of the Bible. Nobody knows that when you talk about Moses in the Bible, that's our great-grandfather. When you talk about Joshua, that's our great-grandfather. They don't want you to know that. Read. They have said, come, 
let us let us cut them off from being a nation uh -huh. that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's why nobody remembers who we are. Nobody remembers the the books about what's written, they are hidden. Now the Bible is being the Bible the the now the white man is putting out new versions of the Bible, New King James, NIV, this and this, NSV, NS this. They say no no no, KJV, the English is too complicated. What is complicated about the word black? Nothing. There's nothing complicated about the word black, but the white man replaced it says no. Make don't say black, say dark. I am dark, not I am black and beautiful. No, I'm dark and and lovely. So what does that mean? I'm dark and lovely. You're not gonna understand what it's saying, man. It's not direct. But when you say I'm black and beautiful, it's like what? I'm gonna read it again and again and again and again. But when you say I'm dark and lovely, that don't mean nothing. The black man will just read over it. You understand? Read. For they have consulted together with one consent. That's the United Nations, the European Union. Read. They are confederate against thee. The, these nations, they hate our guts. Read. The tabernacles of Edom. You see, the white man is the first one on the list, Edom. So the white man is the one that is on the list of the people, the nations that come together to destroy us in our communities. That's why they make sure that they give black men drugs. They introduce cigarettes in our communities to get high and to be addicted. They do all this to do what? To make sure that you don't rise up and rule over them. They don't want that. That's why they do all this so that we fight amongst ourselves. Read on. The Ishmaelites. The, the Arabs. Bo, my friend. This is them. Go ahead. Of Moab. That's the Chinese Moab. Read. And the Hagarim. These are Hamites. Come on. Gebal mm -hmm. and Ammon. These are the Japanese now. Come on. And Amalek. White people that call themselves Jewish. In Israel today, they say, no, we are Jewish people. Yeah, yeah, they are Jewish people. They are not the Jews of the Bible. Those are Amalekites. The people that the Lord told, told King Saul to go and kill. Yes, sir. And King Saul took their best sheep and goats. And now the prophet Samuel is said, what is that thing that I'm hearing in the, in the crawl? Why am I hearing meh up in there? You understand? He said, so I told you to kill the Amalekites and also kill everything of theirs. When you took some of them, he says, this is the best sheep. What for? That's why Saul was saying, listen, you're not going to be king because you didn't follow the instructions, man. Go ahead. The Philistines. That's the Hamites that you were seeing. Paul Gagami. That's them. Read. With the inhabitants of Tyree. Mm -hmm. Ashua also is joined with them. That's the Assyrians. Come on. They have holpen the children of Lot. Uh -huh. Do and No, no, no. They, he says, Ashua also is, Asho also is joined with them. They have holpen the children of Lot. Selah. That's it on that. Now, I just wanted to show you that. What did I say I want? Did I say get something for me? Not yet. Okay. Because I'm looking at something that you're going to get for me next. Okay, now go back. Exodus 1. Exodus 1. Read verse 10. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 10. Come on. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. It says, come on. Let us deal wisely with them. Read. Lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies mm -hmm. and fight against us. Watch this. And so get them up out of the land. Let's get them out of this place. Let's plan evil against them and on how we're going to destroy them. You see, they're all, the nations are always planning and plotting against us. And right now, they have the greatest weapon they use against us. You know what that is called? The media. Radio. Social media. You understand? Television. That's why you've got so many. Why do we need to have so many of them? Netflix, Disney, Amazon Prime. What's the other one? You understand? There's another one in Mzanzi now. It's uh, Showmax. You've got Showmax. There's so many, men. Why do they have all these things? To keep black people entertained. As long as you are entertained, you're not going to think. Because remember during COVID, people started thinking, man. Because now you're cooped up in the house. You have a lot to think about. That's why black men and black women started to wake up to the truth. Some people woke up to this truth because of the COVID. You understand? Now you cooped up in the house. You don't know what to do with yourself. 
Now people started researching stuff. Wait, what? They started looking up, googling things on YouTube and whatnot. People started researching, man, during COVID. The white man is like, nah, you need to go back to the office. This thing of working from home needs to stop. You understand? Because they know when you're working, because you, people started many businesses when they're working from home. The white man didn't like that to say, listen, he's working from home. He's starting a business while he's working for us. No, no, we want hybrid. Two weeks in the office, three weeks at home. Jiggy Jiggy, they said, no, no, we want you full time in the office. Because they know that the most dangerous thing you can have is a black man who thinks. You really got problems, man. But as long as you keep the black man in this red race, he's always thinking about work, work, work. He never has time to think about, to sit down, to really, you know, take a step back and think about how, to, how do I change my nation? Why is my nation like this? They don't give you time to do that. You understand? So that's why. That's, that's why I said, let us deal wisely with them. That's how they deal wisely with us. Now, I want you to go to that link that I sent of Amos the First. This is during the 18th dynasty because that's the time when we left. The 18th dynasty. That's when we left. You understand? That's during the time of the Exodus when we left captivity. When the Lord delivered us through destruction and death of our enemies, then we got delivered. You understand? Now, I don't, I don't want a lot of stuff. I just want, yeah, you can't make this up. Yeah, just read that Amos the first on Wikipedia. The people see it online. All praises. Come on. Reading from Wikipedia.com. .org. .org. Come on. Amos the first. Amos the first. Amos the first. Mm -hmm. Sometimes sometimes written as Amoses or Amis, meaning Aha the moon. Not meaning La, the moon. The moon. Wow. Who, who calls their child that? The moon? Go ahead. Is Bini, born. Is la, born what? Is born. Was if uh, let me read it. Amos the first. You understand? Is born. It says Amon Amos the first was a pharaoh and founder of the 18th dynasty of Egypt, classified as the first dynasty of the new kingdom of Egypt. That's why it says there arose a new king over Egypt who knew not Joseph. That's this is it right here. The first dynasty of the new kingdom of Egypt. The era in which ancient Egypt achieved the peak of its power. You know why? Because Israelites were there. Because why? We built their empires, man, through blood, sweat, and tears. You understand? Now go up. Because Camus, uh, during the 17th dynasty... Camus was the one that expelled the Hyksos, shepherd kings. That's why when Joseph, uh, uh, when Joseph said to his father, says, when Pharaoh asks you what is your occupation, say we are shepherds. Because before that, what was happening? The Hyksos were giving the Egyptians problems because they were shepherd kings. They were the rebels that were invading the Egyptian empire. So they hated them. You understand? Okay, go up. I just want to see who succeeded Amos the first. Go up. Yes, I'm in Hotep. Re click that. I'm in Hotep is the one that succeeded. I'm in Hotep the first. He succeeded um, Amos the first, which was Jordan. That was the new king that the new king over Egypt that rose that knew not Joseph. Okay. Okay, so I'm in I'm in Hotep the first. He's the one that came after Amos the first. Now go up. We want to see who succeeded Amenhotep the first. This is during the 18th dynasty. Thutmose the first. Click it. Okay. You good to read now? Okay. Read that. Thutmose the what? Thutmose the first. Thutmose the first. He says he was the what? Was the third what? It's was, right there. Yes, sir. Read it. Was the third pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt. Okay, let's see who succeeded Thutmose the first. Go up. Thutmose 
Thutmose the second. Thutmose the second. Okay, come on. Was the fourth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt. That's it. Go up. Let's see who succeeded him. These are the pharaohs of the 18th dynasty where Israel was. Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut mm. was the great royal was the great royal wife of Pharaoh Thutmose the second, and the fifth Pharaoh of the eighteenth dynasty of Egypt. So, so you see, so he said Hatshepsut was the wife of Pharaoh, the great royal wife of Pharaoh Thutmose the second. So she was a Pharaoh. Okay, come on, let's see who succeeded her. Go up. Mm -hmm. Thutmose the third, sometimes called Thutmose the Great, mm. was the sixth pharaoh of the eighteenth dynasty. Okay, that's it. Go up. Read that. What does it say? I mean Hotep the second. Mm -hmm. Okay, open it up. Yeah, read that was the seventh pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt. Okay, let's see who succeeded him. Thutmose the fourth mm. was the eighth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt. Okay, that's it on that. Go up. I mean Hotep the third. I mean Hotep the third was the ninth pharaoh of the eighteenth dynasty. Go ahead. Okay, come on. Aknaten. Aknaten was an the tenth ruler of the eighteenth dynasty. The tenth ruler of the eighteenth dynasty. Okay, go ahead. Let's see who succeeded him. These are the Egyptian pharaohs, by the way, that was ruling during the days when we were there. You understand? For four hundred years. Okay, come on. Smenkare. Smenkare. Go ahead. Was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh. Of unknown background who lived and ruled during the Amana period of the 18th dynasty of Egypt. Okay, come on. Let's see who succeeded him. Sure. Nefene Feruten. Nefene Feruten. Read that was a name used to refer to a female king who reigned towards the end of the Amana period during the 18th dynasty. Hey, by the way, you know, today, this, mo I, this morning, I saw the video, uh, I think, um, what's the name? Tandi Somazwai. She was on newsroom. They call her King Ta. Did you know that? This is crazy. I didn't know she's a lesbian now. They call her King Ta. He says the children call her anti King Ta. I'm like, what? You cannot make this up. Man, this is crazy. Okay. Yeah, keep going, man. Hey. Him like James. Go up. Let's see who succeeded Nenfere, whatever. Tutan Kamen. Tutan Kamen. Mm hmm. Was an ancient pharaoh, Egyptian pharaoh who ruled during that time, uh, 1332 to 1323 BC, during the late 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt. The late 18th dynasty. Okay, go ahead. Let's see who succeeded Tutankhamun. AY. Click that. A.Y. was the 
Penal- was the penultimate pharaoh of ancient Egypt's 18th dynasty. Okay? Let's go up now. Let's see who succeeded AY. Horemheb. Horemheb mm-hmm. was the last pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. Was, you see, was the what now? Was the last pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. Was the last pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt, 1550 to 1292 BC. Okay, go up. Let's see who succeeded Horemheb. Yeah, click that. Rems is the first. Ramses the first mm-hmm. was the founding pharaoh of ancient Egypt's 19th dynasty. You see that? So in the 19th dynasty, that's when we left. You understand? But keep going. Let's see who succeeded Ramses the first. Okay? Now this is now, during the time of Ramses the first, now enters the 19th dynasty. You understand? Now give me the book of Exodus 1. Read verse 10 now. Read verse 11. Exodus 1 verse 11. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 11. Watch this. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters mm-hmm. to afflict them with their burdens. Watch this. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities. Treasure cities. Python and Ramses. And what? And Ramses. And what? And Ramses. Python and Ramses. Because it was named after Ramses the first. You understand? But I want to show you something. Ramses the first is called is Ramses the Great. You understand? Now keep going. Leo, who succeed? You see, the one that succeeded Ramses the first is Seri the first. Seri the first is the one that when Moses killed the Egyptian and ran, that's when Seri the first was the ruler. And guess what? Who was gonna succeed him? Ramses the second. Ramses the second is the one when when that's when we left under Ramses the second. Now let's see who succeeded Seri the first. Where we at? Come on. Let's click that. Let's go to that. Yeah. Let's see who succeeded Seri the first. Who's that? Read that. Ramses the second. Ramses the second. Come on. Was an Egyptian pharaoh. He was the third ruler of the 19th dynasty. Read. Along with Thutmos the third. Along with Thutmos the the, the, what, the what? The third. The third. Go ahead. Of the 18th dynasty. Mm. He is often regarded as the greatest most celebrated, most powerful pharaoh of the new kingdom. Of the new kingdom, which is the 19th dynasty. He's the one that put the oppression on a whole new level. You understand? And that's when we cried for us to get delivered out of that hair hole. You understand? Now go to Exodus 1. Exodus 1, read verse 11. Again. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 11. Now this is during the time of Ramses the second. Read. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters mm-hmm. to afflict them with their burdens. This is under Ramses the second. Go ahead. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Read. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Mm. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Go ahead. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Mm. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. Read. In mortar mm. and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. You see that? So now, go to Exodus 2. Exodus chapter 2. Read verse 23. I'm going to show you something. What we are going to read about here, we are reading about Seri the first when he died. After Moses killed that Egyptian that was, um, you know, oppressing an Israelite. Go ahead. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 23. Read. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. This is Thierry the first. Okay, come on. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of hard bond of the bondage. And they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the hard bondage. By reason of bond of the bondage. Come on, man. By reason of the bondage. Read. And God heard their groaning, mm. and God remembered his covenant with Abraham. You see that? He remembered his covenant with Abraham when we were complaining when we were, un- we were slaves in Egypt. So it is today. So do not disconnect what happened in Egypt to what's going on now. Read. 
with Isaac and with Jacob. Mm -hmm. And God looked upon the children of Israel. Right. And God had respect unto them. He had respect unto them. Why? Because he made a covenant with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why he looked upon us and our cry, he had our cries and he respect unto us because of the covenant he made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, now, give me the book, Exodus 2 now. No, 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 let me see. Give me Exodus 3 and 1. This is now after Moses has, has grown. The Lord is calling Moses to come and what? And deliver the people out. Read that, Exodus 3 and 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 1. Read. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, right. the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert mm. and came to the, mount of, to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Right. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire and out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Mm. Go ahead. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight mm. why the bush is not burnt. The bush was on fire, but the bush was not being consumed by the fire. Who does that, man? The most high God of heaven and earth. Go ahead. And when the Lord saw that he, that he turned aside to see, mm. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush mm. and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Here, here am, I. am I. Go ahead. And he said, Draw not nigh to Don't either. come close, come on. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Mm. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Because he was saying, Listen, I agree with your shoes, you attract garbage wherever you walk. That's why when you enter into somebody's house, there's a there's a door carpet. There's a doormat where you wipe your shoes. So Moses was told to listen, everything that you've been attracting, all the garbage you learned in Egypt, you must let it go. I'm going to teach you again anew. Because you are not an Egyptian, you are a Jew and Israel from the tribe of Levi. I'm going to use you to deliver my people out of captivity. That's what he was saying. Read. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, mm. the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Watch this, come on. And Moses hid his face, mm. for he was afraid to look upon God. Go ahead. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, mm. and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Go ahead. For I know their sorrows. The Lord says he knows our sorrows, man. So don't think what when you're going through hard times and you're keeping God's commandments, don't think the Lord don't see that. The Lord sees that thing, man, and he sees that you're trying to glorify him and to please him. The Lord will bless you. Understand that. The Mosai is not unjust. Read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians mm -hmm. and to bring them up out of that land. What verse you at? Verse 8. Sir. Go ahead. The book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 8. Read. And I am come down to deliver, to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, mm. unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Read. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites. The Hittites. And the Hittites and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites. Read, Hamites. These are Hamites. So when we arrived in the, we kicked them out. Under Moses, under Joshua, under King David. Yes, sir. You understand? Read. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. You see that? So if we don't cry in captivity, that we tire of this, we busy joining political parties, thinking the woman Lemabu Julius member will deliver us from slavery. You fooling yourself. The Lord is not gonna hear nothing you say. You understand? Because the Lord said we must cry unto him. He didn't say cry to Julius Malema and be holding the EFF manifesto. No. He said cry unto him and read this Bible and apply it. That's what the Lord wants. Read. And I have also seen the oppression. Wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. You see what the Egyptians was doing? They oppressed us. Read. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, mm. that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You see what we were in Egypt? We were slaves. We see who we, wh what we are in spiritual Egypt now, under the white man. We are slaves this day. Give me Exodus 7 and 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 1. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, 
I have made thee a god to Pharaoh. I have made thee a what? I have made thee a god to Pharaoh. He says, I've made you a god to Pharaoh. Go ahead. And Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. You know what it means when it says, I've made thee a god to Pharaoh? Give me that in 2nd Ezra 1 verse 13. In the Apocrypha. 2nd Ezra 1 verse 13. 2nd Ezra chapter 1 verse 13. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 13. Come on. I led you through the sea. Mm, the Red Sea. And in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. Read. I gave you Moses for a leader. For a what? For a leader. That's why it says, I've made thee a God unto Pharaoh. Moses was a leader. You understand? A leader, a God, meaning a judge. Read. And Aaron for a priest. And Aaron for a prophet. So go back. Exodus 7, read verse 1 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 1. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, mm. and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Jump down to verse 4. Verse 4. Read. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. He says, Pharaoh will not listen unto you, Moses. Read. That I may lay my hand upon Egypt. So, brothers, are we, did we transition back? We, okay, are we, are we still looking at Ramses? Okay, all praises. Come on. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. He says, but Pharaoh is not going to listen to you, Moses. Come on. That I may lay my hand upon Egypt mm. and bring forth mine armies. My what? Mine armies. Brothers, I need you men to understand. We are God's army. There's no two ways about it, man. We are God's army. Understand that. You are not here to become a professional student. Listen, man. You are here to become a soldier. You hit the streets and teach your people God's laws. You're not going to be a go Sunday come to Sunday school. No, 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 no. This is not Sunday school. You are here to learn. We hit the streets. We wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. Boots on the ground. Read that verse again, verse 4. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 4. Read. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. Go ahead. That I may lay my hand upon Egypt. Read. And bring forth mine army. My what? Mine armies. An army. So how can we be an army? Rina, let me cover. What the hell is this? <laughs> we cannot be an army. Rina, let me cover. No, 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 no. You're, you're, we must work on our covers. We must work on our fitness. We must, listen, we are unfit. We need to hit the streets, man. <laughs> Go ahead. And my people... The children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. With what? By great judgment. By what now? By great judgment. By great judgments. Now watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 39 verse 28. One more again. Sirach 39 verse 28. It says by great judgment. Is I'm going to deliver my people out of Egypt. But I'm going to do it by great judgment. Destruction. That's what the Lord is saying. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 39, verse 28. Read. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. For what? For vengeance. For vengeance. Come on. Which in their fury mm. lay on sore strokes. Read. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force. Come on. And appease the rest of him that made them. Come on. Fire and hail mm. and famine and death. And death. Go ahead. All these were created for vengeance. Mm. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction punishing the egyptians to destruction guess what is this is twofold punishing the wicked who's the main wicked on this earth the white man he's the wicked on this earth all the evil that is happening on this earth is because of the white man understand that man and they're gonna be saying no 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 black people are evil Black people are bad. They are the ones that are doing evil behind closed doors while we don't see them. And in the morning when they wake up, they practice the evil they planned the night before. That's what they do. Give me that in Micah 2 and 1. Don't think I'm making this up. Let's read the Bible. Micah 2 and 1. I love this verse. Read that thing for me. Watch this. Just find the book of Jonah. You'll find the book of Micah. Micah 2 and 1. Yes, sir. After Come Micah is the book of Nahum. Come yes, on. Sir. The book of Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Woe to them that devise iniquity. Meaning what? They come up with things to bring sin. They devise iniquity. Sin. Read. And work evil upon their beds. You see, they work evil upon their beds. When we pray to the Lord before we sleep, they pray to Satan. Read. 
When the morning is light. When the morning comes, what do they do? They practice they it. They what? They practice they it. They practice it. Come on. Because it is in the power of their hands. It is in the power of their hands. You see this? Because they are ruling over us right now. That's why it says, because the evil is in the power of their hands. Spiritual wickedness in high places. You understand that? Now, let's get into the place. Give me Exodus 7 verse 17. Put the first plague up on the screen. Exodus 7 verse 17. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. There be plagues that are created for vengeance. Yes, Exodus chapter 7 verse 17. The book of Exodus chapter 7 verse 17. Read. That saith the Lord. In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Mm. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river. Read. And they shall be turned to blood. They shall be what? And they shall be turned to blood. Rivers turning to blood. You see on the screen there? Rivers turning. That's what the Lord did. Rivers turned to blood. Because why? There was fish in there. You understand? There was crocodiles up in there that the Egyptians worshipped. That's why when you travel very back when, you see these tall gates, that be them. They worship crocodiles. Yes, that's them. Those are ancient Egyptians too. Come on, read. And the, and the fish that is in the river shall die. The fish that is in the river shall die. Go ahead. And the river shall stink. Mm. And the Egyptians shall lose to drink of the water of the river. You see that? Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say. What verse you at? Verse 19 now, sir. Okay, that's it on that. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. They keep reading. Verse 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, mm. take thy rod and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, mm. upon their rivers, right. and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water. Meaning everything that had water, the water was bloody. Doesn't matter when you open the tab, you went into the river, the pond, the streams, Everywhere it was blood. Read. That they may become blood. That they may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm. Both in vessels of wood mm. and in vessels of stone. Meaning everywhere. That means what? The people could not drink water. The Mosai. Listen, the Mosai. The Mosai don't play, man. When there's no water, what are you going to do? You can't even go to the shops and buy it. That's how bad it was in Egypt, man. Now, next plague. Exodus 8 verse 1. The book of Exodus chapter 8 verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Read. Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, mm. that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. He says, I'm going to smite all your borders with frogs. Now imagine just this room. The room is full of frogs and we're up in here. What you going to do, man? The frogs, the, and it's not this small onion of frogs. The, it's big, ginormous frogs that you've never seen. You understand? Go ahead. Come on. And the river shall bring forth frogs mm. abundantly. Abundantly. Come on. We shall go up and come into thine house and into thy bench bed chamber mm. and upon thy bed Read. and into the house of thy servants mm. and upon thy people and into thine thine ovens and into thy kneading troughs mm. and the frogs shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants mm. and the Lord spake unto Moses say unto, unto Aaron stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams over the rivers and over the ponds Read. and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. Read. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt. And the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And covered the land of Egypt. Let's go to the next plague. Exodus 8 verse 16. The book of Exodus chapter 8 verse 15. Verse 16. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land. Mm. That it may become the lies throughout that it, that, that it may become lies. That it may become lies throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lies in men and in beast. All the dust of the land became lies throughout all the land of Egypt. Lies. So these are listen, this is the what the gods the 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 uh, lies is unclean. 
So when you have lies, you are anti that means you don't bath any of those things. So guess what? Because why? They trusted that, listen, there's a goddess that is responsible for making sure that they are clean. He said, okay, we'll see. Read. Verse 18. Yes, sir. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lies, mm. but they could not. So there were lies upon men and upon beasts. There were lies upon men and upon beasts. Get the definition of lies. Look it up. Lies. These are the lies. This is what the white man was eating during the Caucasus in the Caucasus mountains of Georgia, Russia. They talk about they are the Vikings. How? When they were eating lies during those days. Did we find it? Okay, come on. What is lies? The idols of uncleanness. Yeah, that's, that's lies right there. You see that thing? Lies. Now, now, go up. Yeah, that's it right there. That's it. Now, now, go up to the, you know, the definition. Yeah, go up. Yeah, click that. Lies, symptoms and causes. They're at the Mayo Clinic. Yeah, click that thing. Symptoms and causes of lice. Let's see what this is. This goes back to uncleanness. Yeah. Now read that. Reading from, reading from mayoclinic.org. Lice. Lice are, are tiny wingless insects that feed on human blood. You see that? They feed on human blood. They give you the heebie-jeebies. Go ahead. Come on. Lies spread from one person, from person to person through close contact and by sharing belongings. Mm. Go ahead. There are three types of lies. Go up. Let's see. Oh. Come on, man. <laughs> Head lies. Head lies. Found on the scalp. Uh huh. They are easiest to see at the, at the nape of the neck and over the ears. You see, I've seen this on white people. They be falling. You understand? You see this white thing be falling? That's lies. And when it fell during the caucus, they ate it. Come on, body lies. Body lies mm. that live in clothing mm. and bedding mm. and move onto the skin to feed. Yo. Body lies most often affect people who are unable to bathe. What do you mean a unable? What you talk about unable? Go ahead. Who are unable to bathe or wash clothing often. You see? Go ahead. Such as homeless people. Go up. Public lies. Pubic. Oh, apologies, sir. Pubic lies. Pubic lies. Also called crabs. Crabs. Mm. Go ahead. That occur on the skin and hair of the pubic area. You see, that's why Kevin Samuel says, wash your nuts. That's why he says, you know, spend some quality time there. Just be a good two minutes. You know, to sit there and just be washing the stuff. Shots fired. Come on, brother. You sit. Listen. Take some good five minutes. Not two. Five minutes. And wash your behind, too. You're not going to tell your officer, go down there, but you don't wash down there. What the hell is this? You must wash. Otherwise, you'll never enjoy. Come on, man. <laughs> mm, shots fired. Read the Bible, man. Less often. Woo -wee. Sorry, brothers. I just went left. You know, bring me back. <laughs> bring me back. <laughs> bring me back, man. Eish. Wow. Oh. Read the Bible. Quite often, they may be found on coarse body hair, mm. such as chest hair, mm. eyebrows, or eyelashes. You see, but that's not pubic. Oh, less often. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's it on that. That's it on that. Mm. You find yourself scratching every now and again. You may have, you may, you may have lies. I've seen people, you know, you know, you standing on the queue. When we're going to catch taxis and whatnot, Mutupizi, he thinks we don't see him. Mutupizi was creature. You got lies. You understand? I've seen this brother, ne? I think even in the ears it goes, ne? You know, the hair in the ears. This brother, he was on the street. You know the ones that be trying, uh, they be selling on the streets next to all the robots? Listen, man. I, you remember, ne? I was traveling with Soldier Samuel. We're going to. 
Was it Cambridge or something? Yo, the brother of PZ, like, the, he was even, like, while he was scratching his ear, I was like, he was enjoying himself so much that he even got hit back. <laughs> Yo, I could not believe it, man. Yo, yeah, ne, you can't make this up. Okay, let's go back. Exodus 8 verse 20. Let's go to the fourth plague. The book of Exodus, chapter, chapter 8, verse 20. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come on. Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water, mm. and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Let my people go, that they may serve me. Come on. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, Read. and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy, hou into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, mm. and also the ground whereon they are. You see that? Go ahead. And I will sever in, I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, mm. in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. So flies, that's Beelzebub. Flies. You see swarms? Look at the flies, man. These were not small. These were flies that could bite you. A big fly as big as Kamel. Just be zooming in. You understand? Bite you and then you just drop dead and die. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> now, give me the book of Zerak 10 and 1, man. Zerak 10 and 1. Is that 10 and 1 what I want? Hold on a second. No, that's not the one. Give me wisdom of Solomon 16 verse 9. I need to come back to this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 verse 9. Go ahead. For them, the bitings of grasshoppers and flies And killed. what? And flies killed. You see what? I'm telling you, like, I'm showing the, the flies that the Lord made during that time. It wasn't a normal fly, man. Yes, sir. Who, which of you, have you ever been bitten by a fly? And if it did, who died? The flies that the Lord made during those days, they were so danger deadly that it bit you, you dropped dead. Yes, Read the Bible again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 9. Go ahead. For them... The bitings of grasshoppers and flies killed. Neither was there found any remedy for their life. For they were worthy to be punished by such. They were worthy to be what? To be punished by such. They were worthy to be punished by such. Okay, is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, give me Ecclesiastes 10 and 1. Ecclesiastes 10 and 1. But guess what? The most High God made the flies that were able to kill, to bite and kill you. What type of a fly is that? A new type of fly on the earth. Look like, look that blade. They look like birds, man. Do you see them? Look at them, man. Come on, read that. Ecclesiastes 10 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. To do what now? To send forth a stinking savor. A stinking savor. Come on. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Now, that's another thing. Now, that's some heavy stuff. That's what we're going to deal with when we're dealing with the men's conference. But the point here I'm showing you is that when there's flies, there's a smell. So the people that were bitten by these big flies, what do you think they had inside of them? Maggots. They had maggots coming out of them. You understand? Mm -hmm. it, wasn't a, it wasn't a small maggot. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, give me the book, Exodus 9, verse 1. The fifth plague, Exodus 9 and 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 9, verse 1. Watch this. Then the Lord said unto Moses, mm. Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, 
Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews. Read. Let my people go that they may serve me. Mm. For if thou refuse to let my people go and will hold them still. Read. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field. So uh, uh, look up those cows of Ramaphosa. Yeah, the cattle, the cows of Ramaphosa. I guess that's what white people call him. Mm -hmm. Ramaphosa. Now read the Bible again. Finish that verse. What verse you at? The book of Exodus, chapter 9, verse 3. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, mm. upon the asses, Red. upon the camels, mm. upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. Mm. There shall be a very grievous murrain. Disease. The Lord says, I'm going to send... What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring boil, I'm going to bring diseases upon the cattle of Egypt. Go ahead. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel mm. and the cattle of Egypt. Read. And there shall nothing die of all that is in the children in the children of Israel. You see, that's him right there. This is Ramaphosa. Look at the cows. You see, these are the cows that they had in Egypt. These are, least even today, you see, oh, these people like your... Uh, Paul Kagame, these are the type of cattle they have. These are the normal cattle that we have in the Bundus. We never see, we never had cattle like this. This is the type of cattle they, they, they worshipped too. You understand? They say, no, these cattle are so beautiful and whatnot. Worship. Exodus 20 verse 3, breaking the first commandment. Read. And the Lord appointed a set time saying, tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. Mm. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died. Mm. But out of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. You see that? Because we didn't have cattle like this. Go ahead. Verse 8 now. The sixth plague. Watch this. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses and mm. unto Aaron. Come on. Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace. Mm. And let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven. In the sight of Pharaoh. Read. And it shall become small dust in the land of Egypt. And there and shall be a boil breaking forth. There's, there's, there's going to be a what now? And shall be a boil breaking forth. Mm. With blains upon men mm. and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. Read. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Mm. And Moses sprinkled up toward heaven. And it became a boil breaking forth. With blames upon men and upon beast. Go ahead. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. Mm. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon upon all the Egyptians. So guess what? Everybody had boils. Even their cattle, their livestock, they all had boils upon them. They were sick. So now, imagine, because boils, they make your body to be on fire. Because it's a boil. Like a boil is like, you know when hot water steps on you? boiling water what happens you get a boil so now imagine you've got all those boils throughout your body how do you sit to go to the bathroom because you must think about these things and when it pops what happens because it's an injury it's a bruise and it's, it's not healed yet it's still fresh the popping of it is painful you understand the ballooning of it is painful. The popping of it is painful too. You can't sit. You can't eat. So the balls are in your mouth also. How you swallow? It was bad. Because you really need to imagine how bad it was. It was terrible. You understand? That's why it says, the Lord says, I'm going to come and judge the Egyptians with great judgment. You understand? Now, give me the next plague. Because remember, Kitesh is the goddess of health and beauty. That's why the Lord put boils on their skins and all that because they thought that the, this, the Kitesh was going to deliver them from the boils. Because again, when you have boils all over, the beauty is gone. Yes, so today, the makeup, the makeup industry and whatnot is a big industry. Guess what? They need Kitesh. Ne? They worship Kitesh. They need the Lord to bring some boils. Yes, That's what they're looking for. But you know how the Lord brings boils today? He just did maybe bends your skin. You see how many of our sisters now get a two tone? Because of this makeup they be putting on their faces, the bleaching of the skin, the pimples, 
and whatnot. Yes, it's because why? They worship Kitesh. You worship Kitesh, the Lord going to show you. You see, that's it right there, Kitesh. The goddess of health and beauty, heavenly goddess. Mm. You understand? And you see how Kitesh, you see this, you see how she's dressed? She's dressed in nothing. What is she wearing? Nothing. That's why today you sisters see sisters, they leave the house half naked, they worship Kitesh. This is the God, the goddess whom they worship. Okay? Now let's go to the next one. The next plague, Exodus 9 verse 16. The book of Exodus chapter 9 verse 16. Read. And in every deed of this cause have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power mm. that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Go ahead. As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people mm. that thou wilt not let them go. Watch this. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail mm. such as not such as has not has not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof even until now. The Lord is saying, listen, the type of hail I'm going to bring upon this land is nothing that has never been seen before, ever. The Lord says, I'm going to bring forth hail. That hail was mingled with fire. You understand that? Is that it on that? Keep reading, man. Come on. Send therefore now and gather thy cattle mm. and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field. Watch this. And shall not be brought home. The hail shall come down upon them and they shall die. They shall what? And they shall die. And they go and die. Now, keep reading. Jump down to verse 22. Go ahead. Verse 22. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, mm. that there may be hail in the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field, mm. throughout, all, throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven. And the Lord sent thunder and hail. Mm. And the fire ran along upon the ground. You see that fire and hail. Remember, fire and hail, this is fire and water. They two don't mix. But on that day, they were able to mix and mingle. For the purpose of destroying the Egyptians. Read. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. Mm. So there was hail. And the fire and fire mingled with hail, mm. very grievous, such as there was none like it in the land of Egypt. In since, all the land, in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation, mm. and the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field. Go ahead, both man and beast, mm. and the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. Go ahead, only in the land of Goshen. Where the children of Israel were, what was there no hate? You see that because the Lord was looking after us. Now, give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon 1918. Listen good. Wisdom of Solomon 19, verse 18. We're coming back. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 18. Listen good. For the elements were changed in themselves by a kind of harmony. Mm, meaning the fire and the hail were harmonious on that day. Go ahead. Like as in a sultry note, change the, the name of the tune, mm. and yet are always sound. I Meaning you can still get music out of it. Read. Which may well be perceived by the sight of the things that have been done. Watch this. For earthly things were turned into watery, mm. and the things that, were, that before swam in the water now went upon the ground. Watch this. The fire had power in the water. The fire had power in the water. Mm. Mm. Listen, man. We're dealing with the God of Israel, man. Read. Forgetting his own virtue. Forgetting his own quenching nature. Go ahead. And the water forgot his own quenching nature. You see that? Because the water put the fire out. On that day, that didn't happen. The water and the fire were working in harmony. To destroy the Egyptians, man. Read. On the other side, the flames wasted not the flesh of the corruptible living things. Mm. Though they walked therein, neither melted they the icy kind of heavenly meat 
that was of nature apt to melt. It's because naturally they're supposed to melt, but they didn't on that day. They did not. Give me that in Sirach 39, verse 29 now. Next verse. We were reading it earlier. Now you're going to understand. Actually, read 28 and 29 together. Ecclesiasticus. Yes, sir. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 28. Read. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. You see that? We just read about them spirits which were created for vengeance. Come on. Which in their fury mm. lay on sore strokes. Read. In the, in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Listen good. Fire and hail. Stop. Fire and hail. That's the plague. The seventh plague. You understand? It was fire and hail. Go ahead. And famine mm. and death. Mm. All these were created for vengeance. They were created for what? All these were created for vengeance. So the fire and the, the seventh plague, they said these were created for vengeance. You understand? Now give me Exodus 9 verse 22. No, no, we read that already. Exodus 10 verse 12. The book of Exodus, chapter 10, verse 12. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for mm. the locusts. Read. That, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, mm. even all that Remember, they... remember, is fire, hail, famine. What brings the famine? The locusts. The locusts, they're going to eat all the crops. If the crops are gone, there's a famine. You understand that? Read. Even all that the hail had have left. Read. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind upon the land. The only problem with this is that why are the people white? Why are the people white, man? The Egyptians was white? Hi. Put another one, the right one, man. Why are these looking like white looking Arabs here? Yes, now read the Bible again. The book of Exodus chapter 10 verse 18. Read. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind upon, upon the land all that day. And all that night, and when it was morning, the east wind brought the locust. Go ahead. And the locust went up over all, over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Mm. Very grievous were they. Very grievous were they. Come on. Remember, these grasshoppers, guess what they did? They were biting too. When they beat you, you drop dead. The same way with the flies. Go ahead. Before them, there were no such locusts as they. Neither after them shall they be, shall be such. Mm. For they covered the face of the whole earth, mm. so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land mm. and all the fruit of the trees Go ahead. which the hail had left. Which the what now? Which the hail had left. Remember, it says there be spirits that are created for vengeance. Fire, hail, famine, which the hail had left. So the hail came and destroyed the crops, but it was not enough. The locusts had to come to create the famine. Read. And there remained not any green thing in the trees mm. or in the herbs of the field. Go ahead. Through all, through all the land of Egypt. Throughout the land of Egypt. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 38. Deuteronomy 28, verse 38. I'm almost done. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 38. Come on. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall gather but little in. Watch this. For the locust shall consume it. The locust shall what? For the locust shall consume it. Because the locust, they cause a famine. Read. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, give me the book of First Kings. Chapter 8, verse 37. Verse book of Kings, chapter 8, verse 37. Watch this. If they be in the land famine. Mm. If, if they, they be in the land what? If they be in the land famine. If they be in the land famine. Come on. If there be pestilence. Mm. 
blasting. Go ahead. Mildew. Locust. What? Locust. What? Locust. You see what causes famine? Locusts. Right? Or if they be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness. Whatsoever be, what? Whatsoever plague. Whatsoever plague. You see, famine is a plague. Famine is a plague. Come on. Whatsoever sickness there be. You see, that when there's a famine, guess what? The plague is the famine which causes diseases and sickness. When the sickness came, which was the COVID, there was no famine in the land. People lost jobs. People lost houses. People lost everything and their lives to and family members. You understand? People were struggling. Why? Because there was a plague. That plague caused the famine and it caused sicknesses and death. Who does all these? The Lord of heaven and earth. You see, this is what we need to understand, man. We're dealing, listen, the God we serve, mm, the original OG. Understand that? Now, give me the book. Go back, go back. Exodus, and now give me Exodus 10 verse 21. The book of Exodus chapter 10 verse 21. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm. Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, Read. that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. So now this is, the, this is the what? The ninth plague. Darkness throughout the land of Egypt. You know what's crazy? We were having load shedding. People were quoting Exodus. Sure. You can't make this up. You know, for the first time, our people know how now to open the Bible. They say, no, you see, there'll be land of darkness. There's going to be darkness, load shedding. I'm like, really? Load shedding, really? Ah, come on, man. Verse 21. The book of Exodus, chapter 10, verse 21. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, and they may, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. He says, this darkness is going to be felt. You are going to feel it, man. That's what he's saying. Read. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Read. They saw not one another. So when they said, listen, there's going to be a power outage for three days, they said they'll be quoting Exodus 10. Verse 23 say, you see, I've been seeing this thing. People be forwarding them to us. I'm like, what the hell is this? Read. They saw not one another, mm. neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. You see that? The children of Israel had light in their dwelling. This light right here in these last days, talk about what? The laws of God. God's commandments. God's, that's the light. The commandment is a lamp and the law is light. The law is light. That's Proverbs 6.23. So now, give me wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 17 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 17 verse 1. Come on. For great are thy judgments and cannot be expressed. Mm. Therefore, unnatured souls have erred. The unnatured souls have erred. That's the Egyptians. Come on. For when unrighteous men thought to oppress the holy nation. The unrighteous men that thought to oppress the holy nation was the Egyptians. Read. They being shut up in their houses. Mm. The prisoners of darkness. You see what the Lord did? He made them the prisoners of darkness for three days. Read. And fettered with the bounds of a long night. Mm. Lay there exiled from the eternal providence. Go ahead. Watch this. For while they supposed to lie hid in their secret sins, mm. they were scattered under a dark veil of forgetfulness. Not only there, not only was it darkness that may be felt, but they had do what? The Lord plagued them with forgetfulness. Go ahead. Being horribly astonished mm. and troubled with strange apparitions. They were seeing ghosts passing in the house. Hearing sounds of lions and waterfalls, but you can't even see. You even forget where your door is, where the wall is, where your table is sitting. The Lord is it. That darkness that even when you sit on the light, it doesn't go. It's, it's on, but you won't see it. Mm. That's how dark it was. Read. For neither might the corner that held them keep them from fear. Mm. 
but noises as of waters mm. falling down sounded about them. Yo. And sad visions appeared unto them with heavy it's a countenance. It's sad visions. It's a sad vision. Imagine, Abbe, this, this is, these are gold stories. You see where the white man comes with the genre of movies called um, horror movies? They get it from this chapter. You see that? Read. And sad visions appeared unto them with heavy countenances. <laughs> Read on. No power of the fire might give them light. Read. Neither could the bright flames of the stars endure to lighten the horrible night. You see that? So listen, there was pitch black. Read. Only there appeared unto them a fire kindled of itself. Mm. So, I mean, imagine. Can you imagine for three days going through this? You, scared, you can't even sleep. Read. Very dreadful. For being much terrified, they thought the things which they saw to be worse than the sight they saw not. Because imagine, the things they saw, it says what? Guess what? That was even better. But they were afraid for the things that they did not see. They don't know where the next horror thing is going to come from. Read. As for the illusions of art music, art magic, apologies, sir. As for the illusions of art magic, watch this. They were put down, and their vaunting in wisdom was reproved with disgrace. Come on, for they that promised to drive away terrors and troubles. These the magicians, the magicians were supposed to drive away these terrors. Go ahead. From a sick soul, mm. were sick themselves of fear. Meaning the the magicians were they themselves were sick. You understand? Read. Worthy to be laughed at. All praises to the Most High. Now, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18 verse 4. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18 verse 4. Come on. For they were worthy to be deprived of light mm. and imprisoned in darkness. Mm. Who had kept their sons shut up by whom the uncorrupt light of the law was to be given unto the world. Watch this. And when they had determined to slay the babes of the saints, one child being cast forth, that's Moses, our forefather, and saved to reprove them, thou tookest away the multitude of their children mm. and destroyest them altogether in a mighty water. That's the Red Sea. Now give me Exodus 11 now. Because this part right here, when it says what? Whom they had determined to slay the babes of the saints. You know where we read, where, where we, you can read about this? Give me Exodus 1 verse 15. Actually, yeah, I'm going to just read one or two, two verses in there. I still have a lot to cover. I'm almost done, but I got a lot to cover. Exodus 1 15 real quick. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 15. Come on. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives. Of which the name of the one was Shipra mm. and the name of the other Pua. Go ahead. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew woman, and see, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. You see what they were doing? If it's a boy, they say, Kill the boy. That's what they are doing today through feminism. Go ahead. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. This is, this is feminism right here. Feminism. Okay, go back. Exodus 11 verse 1. The book of Exodus chapter 11 verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go th hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Go ahead. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of a neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. Come on. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Mm. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Watch this. Come on. And Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight will I go out in the midst of Egypt. Read. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the mill and all the firstborn of beasts. 
And they now, shall now read verse 4 again. One more again. The book of Exodus chapter 11 verse 4. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, about midnight. About what? About midnight. About midnight. Come on. Will I go out into the midst of Egypt? He says at midnight, I'm going to go out in the midst of Egypt. The Lord is going to kill all their firstborns. Read. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. Mm. But against any of the children of Israel. Okay, that's it on that. Read verse 9, verse 6, one more again. The book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 6. Read. And, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt. There's going to be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt. Remember, it says, I've seen the affliction of my people and I've heard their cry. So now the Lord says, the same cry that they made for my, to my people, I'm going to make their people to have the same cry. You get it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Such as there was none like it, no shall be like it anymore. All oh, praises to the Most High. Now, this is the 10th plague. We're going to deal with it later on. Give me Exodus 12 and 1. Remember, at this time, the, the firstborns were not put to death yet. Because Moses needed to teach us about the Passover. You understand that? Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, mm. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Go ahead. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So the month that we're in right now, this is the first month of the year. Read. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers. Read. A lamb for a house. Mm. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. So now it says the lamb. So guess what? We eat lamb on the Passover. We don't eat chicken on the Passover. We don't eat beef on the... We eat lamb or goat. Okay, come on. Your lamb shall be without blemish, mm. a male of the first year. So on the tenth day, you must have lamb in your house. And then on the fourteenth day, you kill the lamb at even of the Passover. So that's why on the tenth day, we make sure to have lamb in the house. You understand? Read. He shall take it out from the sheep mm. or from the goats. Come on. And he shall keep it up until the... It says from the sheep or from the goats. So it can be lamb or goat. Read. And he shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Watch this. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Read. And they shall take off the blood and strike it up on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Watch this. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. We shall eat the flesh in that night. Come on. Roast with fire. We must not boil it with water. Roast with fire. Roast. 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 Bread. Go ahead. And unleavened bread. Bread without yeast. Read. And with bitter herbs. Mm. They shall eat it. So bitter herbs that goes into your coriander, your mint. You understand? What's the other ones? Rosemary is it? Those herbs, they are bitter. You don't cook them, you don't boil, you eat them raw. You understand? Go ahead. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with his putanence thereof. The insides, go ahead. And he shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning, he shall burn with fire. You see that? So, but what we did, we guess what? We finished the meat. The meat was all done. There was nothing left. Everything was finished, man. Go ahead. And thus shall he eat it with your loins gathered, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Read. And he shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. It is the what? It is the Lord's Passover. It is the Lord's Passover. Go ahead. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this mm. night and will smite all the first, firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast, mm. and against all the gods of Egypt, 
I will execute judgment. I will do what? I will execute judgment. Because the Lord says, vengeance is mine. Read. I am the Lord. Come on. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses wherein ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Mm. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Read. When I smite the land of Egypt. You see that? So this what we read in right here is also what the Lord is using Moses to prophesy on what will happen in the last days. What Christ would do. You understand? So it says, where, where, whichever house that has the blood on it, guess what? The Lord says, I'm going to pass over the house. And I'm not going to put you to death. Hold that. Give me the book of Revelation. Revelation 12. Revelation 12 verse 11. Watch this. The book of Revelation. This is when the white man is taken out of his kingdom. Watch this. Listen good. The book of Revelation. Start of verse 10. Start of verse 10. You know what? Read 9. Read 9 through 11. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. Come on. And the great dragon was cast out. Read. That old serpent mm. called the devil. Called the devil. And Satan. And Satan. This is the white man. Read. Which deceiveth the whole world. Who has deceived the whole world? How many people believe on this earth that the Christ is white? Most people believe that garbage. How many people believe that God is white? Most people believe that lie. God is a black man with a beautiful afro. With a garment that fills the whole temple. Mm. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth. Read. And his angels were cast out with him. You know with, with his angels? You know when we read in Psalms 83? The tabernacles of Edom, Ishmael, Moab, Hagarins, Ammon, Amalek does his angels. Read. And I heard a loud voice saying in mm. heaven, Now is come salvation mm. and strength mm. and the kingdom of our God. And the kingdom of our God, the God of Israel and none else. Read. And the power of his Christ. Mm. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. You, you know who is the accuser of our brethren? The white man. Every time when you switch on the news, the black, there's always a black man who's, who's deemed as corrupt. The media, just watch Newsroom, watch ENCA, watch SABC. That's the garbage you're going to find. Every time you switch on the television, there's a black man who's being accused of being corrupt. Every single time, because the white man is the devil. Read the Bible again. For the what now? For the accuser. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Watch this. Which accused them before our God day and night. You watch the news during the day. The black man is some, something. Something be going on. Switch the news on the night. That's what you'll find. You watch movies. The black man always die. You understand? Keep going. Watch this. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. You see that thing? What happened during back, back in the day? During the time of Egypt, we overcame by the blood of the Lamb. He says, put it on the two side posts. So now in these last days, it's the same thing. When the white man is destroyed, guess what? We're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Because guess what? No evil will touch us. <laughs> on that day, when the Lord returns. Go ahead. And by the word of their testimony. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. He says they love not their lives unto death. That means you gave up your life for this. You give up your life for this, for this life. This life. The actual, this is life. Where we were living, that's not living, man. This is life right here. You know, this is life eternal. Okay. Now go back. Exodus 12. Exodus 12. Um, read verse 13. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 13. Read. And the blood shall be shall be to you for a token upon the houses Read. Where, in ye, where, where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Go ahead. When I smite the land of Egypt. When I what now? When I smite the land of Egypt. When the Lord smites the land of Egypt. Come on. 
and this day shall be unto you for a memorial. You see, the Passover is a memorial day, man. Is a day when we remember what the Lord did for us when we got delivered from the land of Egypt. So, guess what? We must observe this every single year. Read. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord mm. throughout your generation. Forever. Come on. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. For how long? By an ordinance forever. Forever. Jump down to verse 18. Verse 18. Come on. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, Read. ye shall eat unleavened bread. Come on. Until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. You see that? So that's why every day we have unleavened bread. Because the feast of the Passover is the feast of unleavened bread for yeah. seven days. There must not be leaven found in your house. Yes, you understand? Read. Seven days shall, shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, mm. whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Go ahead. Ye shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations shall he eat shall he eat unleavened bread. Shall he eat unleavened bread? Now jump down to verse twenty three. Verse twenty three. Read. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side post, the Lord will pass over the door. The Lord will do what? The Lord will pass over the door. That's what the Passover is about. The Lord passing over our houses because why? We had the blood on the doorposts because we overcame by the blood of the lamb. Back then, it was what? The actual lamb that we slaughtered because we're still under the law of animal sacrifice. Now Christ sacrificed himself for the 12 tribes. Now we, go, we, now we overcome by the blood of Christ. You understand? Yes, Read. And will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Go ahead. And he shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. For how long? Forever. For how long? Forever. Now jump down to verse 28. Verse 28. Watch this. And the children of Israel went away mm. and did as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. Watch this. And it came to pass that at midnight. That at what time? That at midnight. That at midnight. Come on. The Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Mm. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on the throne Read. unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. Go ahead. And all the firstborn of cattle. Go ahead. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, mm. ye and all his servants, and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Read that again. Come on. Verse 30, man. Come on, come yes, on. Sir. The, the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 30. Read. And Pharaoh rose up in, in the night, ye and all his servants, mm. and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry. There was a what? There was a great cry. There was a great cry. So imagine the amount of crying that was taking place in all of Egypt. Remember, Egypt is an empire. Now imagine the whole of America crying. The whole of America crying. The whole of Europe crying. You understand? The whole of the Afrikaners crying. The whole of Germany crying. Why? Come on. For there was a great cry in Egypt. Read. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. You see that? Where there was not what? Where there was not one day. There was not one day. That means the time will come where there's going to be all families be put to death. And when you walk into that house, there's not going to be one who was not dead. The future. Now, go ahead. And he called for, and he called for Moses and Aaron. Okay, that's it on that. Read verse thirty-four. Yes, sir. The book of Exodus, chapter twelve, verse thirty-four. Watch this. And the people took their dough before it was leavened. Read. Their kneading troughs be, being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. So when it says the people took their dough before it was leavened, let me explain what it means here. It means. Yes, we mixed the dough and everything, and the leaven was in it, but it didn't rise. So before it could rise, I agree when it rises, that's when now it's fermenting. So before the fermentation took place, we left at midnight. That's why it says it was unleavened. 
You get it? Yes, sir. Okay, read that again, verse 34. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 34. And the people took their dough before it was leavened. Right. And their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. Go ahead. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. The word of Moses in chapter 11. Yes, sir. Read. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver mm. and jewels of gold and raiment. While they were crying, we took their, their, their possessions. We took their pos- We even took their clothes. Those glorious, those, no, those, those garments that they had, we took them. Read. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. Mm. And they spoiled the Egyptians. What did we do to the Egyptians? And they spoiled the Egyptians. We took everything of theirs while they were crying. You see, this is the type of God we serve. Who don't feel sorry for our enemies? Our enemies, their firstborns have been put to death. Their mothers are crying. Fathers are crying. The Lord says, take everything of theirs. While they're crying. So do you telling me that if it's up to us, we're going to come out of this? No. We're going to start feeling sorry for them and say, oh, but their firstborn is dead. Listen, praise the Lord. Take it. What does he have? He got what? Take it. That's the God we serve. Understand that. Okay, now. Hmm. Hey, you know what? Because we're still observing the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, mm. Go back to Sirach 39, verse 28. The deliverance part, I'm going to deal with it on the closing of the Feast of the Passover, which is Monday night, if it be the Lord's will. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, 39, verse 28. Watch this. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Come on. Which in their fury lay on sore strokes. Read. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force. Watch this. And appease the wrath of him that made them. Come on. Fire and hail. Fire and hail. And famine. And famine. And death. And what? And death. And what? And death. And death. Death. Death to the Egyptians, men, our enemies. Drop dead and die. Praise the Lord. Read again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse, verse 29. Read. Fire and hail and famine mm. and death. And death. Come on. All these were created for vengeance. All these were created for vengeance. So today's topic is what? Passover 2024, destruction, death, and deliverance. I will deal with deliverance on the closing of the feast of the Passover. Because that's the meaty stuff. You understand? I went over the basics. You understand? So, Lord's will Monday night, I'm going to go over the deliverance part. The closing of the feast of the Passover on M- Monday night, if it be the Lord's will. So, I'm going to end the class right here. Let's give the Lord a hand. You understand? Hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. One second. Give me second verse 15, verse 11. Read 10 and 11. Okay. This is a taste of what's coming next. Up next. Read that. Second verse 15, verse 9. No, verse 10. Verse 10. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 10. Listen good. Behold, mm. my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. Read. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Now read that again. The book, second book of Second book of Ezra. Remember chapter. now, this is the prophet Ezra. This is during the time of Persia. Egypt is long gone. Mm. You understand that? Yes, okay, read that again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 10. Go ahead. Behold, my people is led as a, f- as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now. I will not what? I will not suffer them now. I will not suffer them when? 
now when now when now go ahead to dwell in the land of Egypt to dwell in the land of Egypt he says i'm not going to suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt Exodus 20 verse 2 real quick come on man the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2 watch this i am the lord thy god right which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt uh, out of the land of Egypt come on out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is the house of bondage. You understand? Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. Watch this. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord shall do what? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord will bring you into Egypt the second time. Go ahead. With ships. With what? With ships. Well, the first time when we came into Egypt, we walked. So now the Lord is letting you know, in the last days, you're going to go into Egypt via what now? With ships. With ships. Cargo slave ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Meaning the same way I spake unto thee. Thou shalt feed no more again. Go ahead. And then. Once you get off those slave ships, what's going to happen? Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You're going to be sold to your enemies. For bondmen. Bondmen. And bondwomen. And bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. So this Egypt that the Lord is speaking of is not ancient Egypt. It's spiritual Egypt. That's why it says, with ships. When our forefathers were being transported to North, Central, and South America... You understand? Angola, Gabon, Mozambique, South Africa, China, India. They were transported via what? It was not aeroplanes. It was slave ships. We are now in spiritual Egypt. And who is Pharaoh now? The white man. He is the new Pharaoh. Okay? Now go back to 2nd Exodus 15. 2nd book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 10. Mm. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. Right. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Right. But I will bring them with a mighty hand. Watch this. And a stretched out arm. Watch this. And smite Egypt with plagues as before. Stop. I will do what? And smite Egypt with plagues. And I'm going to smite Egypt with plagues as what? As before. As before. The Lord is letting you know. This is not talking about the Egypt that we're just reading about. Okay, come on. And will destroy all the land thereof. And will destroy all the land thereof. Watch this, verse 12. Egypt shall mourn. And Egypt, spiritual Egypt shall mourn. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. Come on. They that, they that till the ground shall mourn. That's it on that. That's it on that. It says what? It says what? And e Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. Now, this right here is talking about now in these last days. The new Egypt. You understand? Let's be great. Next week, we're going to be going over some things. Lord's will. You understand? Lord's will. I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to deal with deliverance. If it be the Lord's will.